and it should be sunny the remainder of the day. Team captains meeting at midfield. You see number 44, Gary Thompson for Colorado State. He will not go today. Suffered a concussion on Tuesday. Second team all whack performer a year ago. He will not go. You know, it's interesting he got that in practice. It must have been quite a blow because normally you just get right over, you know, that type of an injury to last a day or two, but put him out for this week. Pro Bruce is very concerned about this ball game. Talked about it beforehand. He said it's hard for a team to be overconfident at one and two, but he said Eastern Michigan's a fine football team. They're very large up front. Well, they're very large up front. Also, they come out of a, a great tradition, and I think that's one of the things that's really uh, scaring Earl Bruce is that these guys come in, they play hard. You go out there and you look at these uh, these ball players that they got off the bus, you know, they all look like they were farmers, and it don't look like they were, uh, you know, riding the tractor, it looked like they were pulling it. <laughs> we were standing next to Oval James when they got off the bus yesterday, and he said, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I can't stand looking at this. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> put, put fear into the AD there. Second straight 3-0 and start, third 3-0 and start in the last four years for Eastern Michigan. Two years ago, they were 10-2, and and they won the California Bowl, a 30-27 victory over San Jose State. And Harkema believes this crew could be every bit as good. He certainly is a positive coach. Uh, you know, he looks on the bright side of everything. Colorado State has won the toss. They have elected to receive. Back deep for the Rams, Rodney Bowman, also Tony Carr. Bowman, you'll see, returning punts as well. It's an interesting formation by Eastern Michigan. I wonder if they will separate from here. <laughs> I guess so. John Lope will kick it off for Eastern Michigan. The Hurons taking on the Rams from Hughes Stadium. Glad you're with us. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, and Steve Alvarez. This is Bowman at his own five across the 20. A little bit of a hole, and it'll be brought down. Still going. Finally brought down around the 24-yard line. Tough to bring down. It was interesting. It looked like he was running on a treadmill at the time. So the Rams will get it going there. Mike Jimenez will be the quarterback. Kevin Verdugo is still out with a shoulder injury. They hope he will be back for the Air Force game in the opener of the WAC next season. Jimenez, a guy who can run the football as well as throw it. Verdugo, more of a thrower. First and 10 for the Rams. Toss sweep, Tony Alford. And Alford gets just about a yard, maybe a yard and a half to the 25. Brendan Flaherty made the tackle. Alfred, the tailback, he's rushed for over 200 yards the last couple of weeks. Todd Yurt scored four touchdowns a week ago. Willis is dangerous. Bowman as well. Greg Scott, undersized tight end at 6'2 and 205. So let's call it second down and nine yards to go. Rams out of the eye formation and a double tight end situation. Steve Ratzlaff in the ball game. Lone receiver is Willis, flanked near side. This is Yurt breaking through and across the 35 for a first down for Colorado State. Bob Navarro from his free safety position made the stop. No question about uh, what Earl Bruce wants to do. He wants to establish uh, uh, supremacy, if you will, on that offensive line, just going straight ahead. And I tell you, he uses the right guy to get uh, started there. Offensive line, Larita is the veteran. He started 25 straight, Dorr, Whitmer, Padilla, and Lindner. Undersized at 235 at right tackle. First and 10 for Colorado State. This is Yurt again. Ball's on the ground. And Eastern Michigan has it. And Tom, you talked right off the top about the importance of the Rams not turning the football over, and they do deep in their own territory. Flaherty knocked it loose. 92 made the recovery. A little trap block here. Doesn't look like Larita uh, quite got his man. You get the middle linebacker coming, put his helmet right on the ball of Brendan Flaherty. There comes the ball, it comes out. Tom Schooler with the recovery. That is Tom Sullivan, 6'2", 205-pounder from Jackson, Michigan, fifth-year senior quarterback. They, too, go out of the eye. Give to the tailback is Foster, and he picks a hole and picks up a couple of yards inside the 30 to the 29. Paul Hanks, who 
move down the line of scrimmage from his right end position. Let's check the offensive starters for Eastern Michigan. There is Sullivan. He can throw it well, doesn't make too many mistakes. Not real mobile, however, but given time, he can pick you apart. Been around the program, as I said, for five years. Second down and eight. Big hope for Foster, and he slips down to the 21, right about where he needed to get for the first down. That was a little delay. And Foster was able to pick it up. Perry Foster, formerly recruited by Michigan, winds up at Eastern Michigan. We'll talk about that story later on. Charles Nash will not go. He has a bad ankle. Hector Murillo will start at fullback. First down as Foster did get enough. So first and 10 and threatening. Eastern Michigan at the 21-yard line of Colorado State. Just underway, first quarter. This is Murillo over the top as if he was on the goal line. And with the leap, he's able to pick up three. It looked like uh, Hector Murillo had no idea of what the down and distance was. Normally you would uh, see that if it's a short yardage. Uh, he just dove over the pack at 6'1", uh, 247 pounds. That's not an easy feat to do, though. He's a load. From Gardenia, California, El Camino Junior College. Played with a couple of Rams there. They gave him five on the leap, so it's second down and five. Foster with a bit of opening, and Lance Anne puts the ropes after a couple. It'll be a third down situation for Eastern Michigan. You know, both teams have the exact same game plan. Establish the line of scrimmage, get your running game going. Uh, Perry Foster, as we see here, he's been having quite a year through here early in the season, and he's a very, very capable back. Rams make some changes defensively. Ron Martin comes into the ball game. They run a 3-4 defense, but right now they'll go to a 4-3 with four down linemen on third and short. Foster gets the call, and he picks up the first down inside the 10 to the 8. It'll be first and goal for Eastern Michigan. Good straight-ahead blocking by the offensive line. Offensive line is making good contact with the defense here. Good surge. Here they come. Everybody out. Just a little seal block. Everyone get the man in front of them. Good lead block there uh, by Hector Murillo. He gets good yardage. Great play. Dan Wilson tripped him up in the secondary, but first and goal. And here we see the wishbone. Eastern Michigan does this inside the 10-yard line. The extra tailback is Mitch Brown. He's a load at 6'1", 212. This is Foster bouncing to the outside, and he'll walk in. Touchdown, Hurons. Fogarty had a good block. The tight end sealed the corner. And boy, I could have run that one in. Boy, that was, a, <laughs> that was real effortless there. It looks like the Rams were pinching to the inside, and then their support man, the contain man on the outside, he peeked in there and got pinched in himself. No one out there to contend. Uh, Perry coming in. Perry Foster. Tim Hennigan will be in the ball game to attempt the extra point. He kicks straight on. Pretty accurate inside of 40 yards. If it goes longer than that, Lope would attend, uh, attempt the field goal. So here's Hennigan. Out of the hole to Stacy Stewart. It is up and just through. 7-0. Eastern Michigan breaks on top with 11-12 to go in the first quarter. They convert after the Todd Yurt fumble. One yards after the turnover in six plays. Five of those carried by Perry Foster. He picked up 25 of those yards. Here's the score again. Just a, a handoff, a little misdirection there. You got... Uh, Mitch Brown out there blocking for him. They sealed everybody in, and he just waltzes. I think Burns, who has been the contained man, he peeked in a little bit when he should have been the support man, uh, trying to help on the inside. And they move all 31 yards on the ground. There's the stats on the drive. After the turnover, fumbled by Todd Yurt, knocked loose by the inside linebacker, Brendan Flaherty. John Lope will kick it off again to either Bowman or Sean Willis. Excuse me, now it's Bowman and Tony Carr back. Carr back up, running back to Tony Alfred. Seven to nothing, Hurons. And this goes out of bounds, so they'll walk off five yards. 
against Eastern Michigan. They'll have to kick it again. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez. Steve? Thank you very much, Drew. You mentioned Eastern Michigan moved all 31 yards on the ground. They're a big football team. They have some big linemen. I talked to Rams head coach Earl Bruce before the game. I said, hey, your opposition has some big guys. He said, yeah, they're big, but they're also wearing white, and that makes guys look bigger. Well, I don't know about that, but maybe in the dead of winter, I'm going to look pretty strange wearing a white jacket down here. But, uh, I'll throw it back up to you for now. Hey, you, look, you, you look pretty big right there, Steve. I've heard that theory before, believe it or not. I don't know if I want to claim to that, but I've heard that, hey, we're going to wear white, teams think, because they feel like they're bigger. You believe that, Tom? Well, I know that when I played, we wore white shoes because it made us uh, seem faster, so <laughs> maybe there is something to it. Coach is always looking for that added advantage. In any event, Lope will kick it off now from his 30-yard line, so the Rams figure to get slightly better field position. There's Lope, junior from Marshall, Michigan. Once again, in the direction of Rodney Bowman. And Bowman can't see it, misses, he misjudged it. Must have lost it in the sun, it goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line. It looked for all the world like he was about to catch it, and it landed next to him. So the Rams a bit shaky early. Boy, this this has to be, oh boy, the sun must have been right in his eye or something, uh, because boy, he's lucky that they didn't get down there and recover that one, take a wrong bounce, and then uh, the Hurons are, you know, in control of the ball at the 12 yard line. So the Rams don't get good field position. They start from their own 12. Willis will come to the near side. Mark Holmes, first action of the year, coming off a hamstring injury, splits out wide to the top of your screen. And now we have whistles. There's a timeout on the field. I think it's because the uh, Hurons are out there with 10 men out there. I think if you count them. Well, they burn one early. Eastern Michigan takes a timeout. And perhaps that is something that will occur with a team that has wholesale changes. I mean, some guys play one series and come out. Some play two. Some play three. But there's always changes going on that's always the danger when you're platooning as uh, rapidly as they will be doing someone gets nicked up someone's running down under the uh, kickoff he gets nicked up he's down there getting assistance from the trainer and he's supposed to be out there on the field well uh, smartly uh, brian uh, flaherty the 6 225 pound middle linebacker he looked out and counted hey we got 10 guys call a timeout or we can get burned here real quickly well, Prime Sports Network will bring you exclusive coverage of Big 8 football this fall. You'll see Oklahoma taking on Kansas, Missouri against Colorado, Nebraska against Oklahoma State, just to name a few. Catch all the action of Big 8 football this fall on Prime Network. Macronado in the game at fullback for Todd Yurt. Probably nothing wrong with Yurt. Those guys do switch off quite a bit. Alfred is the deep tailback. And Jimenez wants to put it up. And that's picked off, 29 stepping in front, Bob Navarro, the free safety, and another turnover and great field position again for the, uh, for the Hurons at the 26-yard line. The Rams self-destructing on offense. Little play-action pass. Now, one of the problems with play-action pass is you have to have the linebackers have a reason for looking in there. The Rams haven't been running the ball that well. Navarro steps up. He's not fooled at all. He was trying to go to his tight end, Greg Scott, streaking down the middle. Not a good throw. You could see Navarro read it entirely. He broke on the football and comes up with the pick. Well, he never moved. He stayed right home. His fourth pick of the season. That leads the Hurons. Dan Bennett goes in motion. And Sullivan to put it up for the first time. Has a screen set up. And was that picked off? No. Dropped by Tippaconic. He's claiming that he caught the football. The referee disagrees. And that battle. Actually, it's number 90, Paul Hanks, 6'5", 232. Well, he came up with it. At least he knew what to do. Again, on the first down, you get play action pass. Tom Sullivan wanted to go over the screen right here. He wanted to put out a screen. There's no one there. Hector Murillo was intended receiver. Paul Hanks got in the middle of that one. Good play. That was Hanks, not Tippaconic. Tippaconic was pursuing Sullivan. So it'll be second and 10. 10.58 to go first quarter. 7 or nothing. Eastern Michigan. The Rams, if you're just joining us, have turned it over twice now. Once by way of fumble, once by way of interception. Now another timeout on the field. You know, one of the things that the Rams have also done is they've allowed uh, an Eastern Michigan uh, team who had doubts as to whether or not they could play at this level, come in here and play on the road and beat a team like the CSU Rams who played so well against Tennessee, against CU. 
But now they've allowed them to get their confidence up. Hey, you've got into the, the cage with the tiger, and hey, his teeth aren't so long. Slot to the top of your screen. Rodney's screen inside of him is Dan Benziger. Now Benziger comes across the offensive set. Foster on the delay, still on his feet to the 21-yard line. He is slippery. He's a glider. Tackled by Craig Gersell coming up from a strong safety position. Let me set the defense for you. Foster, I'll do it after this play. Tom, take it away. Foster demonstrating some good feet here. This is almost a delayed type draw. Get a lead block there by Hector Murillo. Look at him just glide as you mentioned, Drew. You know, great run on first down. Boy, he's a good looking running back. Third down and three. Ball just inside the 21 yard line, Colorado State. Sullivan to the outside. Foster should have enough for the first down and does to the 16 yard line. Simple swing pass. Defensively for the Rams, they're in a 34. Sharico at left end. Eric Shaler gets the start on the nose. You'll see David Grimes as well. Paul Hanks, the right end. The linebackers in the 3-4. Steve Rule, one outside linebacker. Donovan Gans, number 92, a true freshman from Orange, Texas, gets the start at the other side. Neural Bruce did that because he said Gans has great speed. We have to utilize that. Inside, Lance Sané, Eric Tipiconic starts for the injured Gary Thompson. Secondary, Carolyn Jones at the corners. Dan Wilson at the free safety. Gersell at the strong safety. First and 10 for Eastern Michigan. Foster, big opening again, and flags come down from the outside. Closed up quickly at the 13-yard line by Lance A. Foster is showing that he has great vision as a running back. He knows where his blockers are. He knows where that hole is supposed to be. He can also feel the defenders coming in at him. That time, he really had no assistance from his fullback, who was uh, the lead blocker, and he still picked up two or three yards, though there is a penalty on the play. Play came down from the outside, the far outside. I figured it might be procedure or motion against the offense. At least they're having a discussion to find out what it is exactly is. Or it could be offsides on the defense, somebody lining up offsides or jumping off. It's a procedure penalty against the offense. Jim Harkema said this is a great opportunity for our conference, not just for Eastern Michigan, to play a Western Athletic Conference team. He says the MAC wants to reach the level that the WAC has and, and to a lesser degree the Big West has as far as a college football conference with a good deal of tradition and drawing a lot of fans and that sort of thing. So he feels it's a great step forward for his club to be in four college. And, and he really he really has the confidence in his conference, not just his team, that they are capable of playing the type ball that they play here in the WAC. Benziger and screen to the near side. It'll be first down and 15, ball at the 22. Foster. Tackled from behind by Steve Rule, but he advanced the football about six yards. He's slippery. Foster was recruited by Bo Schembechler in Michigan, and then at the last moment, Schembechler took back the scholarship offer because Foster had some problems in high school, some personal things going on, and he went down the road, just seven miles down the road from Ann Arbor to Ypsilanti in eastern Michigan. You know, you're certainly looking at a back that has, you know, the, the ability to play at that level where a Michigan would want him, and yet we're having an opportunity to see him uh, here in this particular ball game. Bennett in motion, Sullivan outside and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That play was read a little bit better by the Rams. Same play that it went for a first down last time by Foster. Ane got over there. You know, talking to the offensive coaches uh, of the Hurons, they said one of the things that they were going to do in their game plan is to get the ball in Perry Foster's hands. They feel that he is the game breaker. He is a make or break type ball player and that they can win it if they put the ball in his hands as many times as they can. When you see, as we're looking at right now, Hector Murillo being the single back, well, Foster is still in the ball. He's right, right down here on the wing. He's still in the ball game. So they're not taking him out. Third and 10, single setback is Murillo. And whistles blow this one dead. And perhaps that took too much time. Possibly a delay of game there. That's exactly what it was, so it'll now be third and 15. 
8.06 to go in the first quarter. 7 to nothing, Hurons. They marched 31 yards in six plays after a Todd Yurt fumble on the initial possession for Colorado State. They have the football back in good position after a Jimenez interception. Bob Navarro picked it off for the Hurons. You know, it's very important for the Rams to really establish themselves as a good ball club because you allow Eastern Michigan to come in here and push you around, they're going to start doubting their abilities again. And they don't need to do that in this stage of the game. Murillo, the single setback, three wideouts, screen and Bennett to the near side, Benziger to the top of the screen. Sullivan looking end zone, has a man and just overthrows Rodney Screen who had a step. And there is a flag down in the backfield in the area of holding, so this could go against the Hurons. You have a controlled blitz here coming up. Murillo picks him up. He sees him. Uh, Sullivan gets rid of the ball, kind of turns his back. He knew he was going to get hit, uh, but I think the penalty goes against the Hurons. Giselle was covering on the play, and Screen did have a step. It'd be interesting to see if Colorado State elects to take it because it would be fourth down and the field goal attempt would be in the neighborhood of 38 yards, 39 yards. Well, it certainly doesn't look like an automatic decision here uh, for old Bruce. They're really contemplating this. Ane is sitting over there. Sirico is saying, hey, what do we do? Looks like they're going to push him back. Take him out of field goal range. It looks like what they probably want to do with this particular one. Here's another decision that would be more automatic with the kicking tee in the past with the platform. Now that you have to kick off the ground, a 38-yarder is not as automatic, and indeed they do take the penalty. In the past, a 38-yarder off the platform with a decent kicker was made 80-85% of the time. Most of the time, you know, now you, you're going to have to uh, be a little more calculated in your decisions as to what you want to do. And Earl Bruce is thinking, you know, uh, get him out of there, take that three points away. So the ball goes out to the 31-yard line. It'll be third and 25. Look for the Hurons to keep the ball on the ground. I'd be surprised if they put it up in the air right now. Up to Maria, the long setback. But they're in a passing position, so here we go. And he lobs it down the middle to his tight end. He had a step, and he just overthrew Fogarty. He had Giselle, the strong safety, beat. They hook up. That might go for six. You know, they had that call... That was not an option play. That's not one. If they're in a zone, I'm going to go, you know, to the flanker or whatever. They were looking at the tight end all the way, and he's a big receiver for them, uh, but he just overthrew him. It was a great call, just wasn't executed. Field goal attempt will be of 48 yards. It looks like the Hurons are believing in this light air theory up here. Yeah, because they bring in Hennigan, who normally only kicks inside the 40. This is up and just short. Didn't quite get there. So they should have stuck to their theory of keeping him inside of the 40. So the Rams dodge the proverbial bullet there. It is still 7 0 with 720 in it over. Yurt with Alford and Todd Yurt gets the call. And he picks up a few to the 35 yard line. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez. Steve, what do you got for us? Thank you very much, Drew. You see Rodney Screen, the Euron's uh, starting split end, is uh, trying to stretch out a hamstring. He's had some problems with it so far in the first quarter, and uh, it, it's interesting. He said he's had some cramping as well, but it's cool down here. It's not a very hot day. I don't know if the altitude is affecting him either, but uh, he's in some pain right now. They're trying to stretch it out, and we'll let you know if he's going to get back in the ball game. Drew? Okay, Steve. Rodney Screen, the fastest of the Eastern Michigan Hurons. He's got good speed. Holmes comes in motion on second and six. Jimenez to the outside. This is Willis at the sticks, 41-yard line. Tackled immediately by Warner Blakely. Sophomore from Henry Ford High School in Detroit. Some of the play calling here is kind of interesting. You get a play-action pass in the middle. Play-action is to hold your inside linebackers, and then you throw an out. Well, he does throw the out. He completes the pass and uh, get right down to the sticks. We'll see if they get a first down. Great tackle there, but that's an interesting call. 16th catch on the year for Willis. He leads the team, averaging better than 16 yards of reception. And if it's short, it's short by about a half an inch. It's not. It's a first down by a half an inch. Well, you needed a committee down there to decide whether or not that was a first down or not. It was that close. 
There's a good shot of Willis, one of the co-captains, a senior from Cerritos, California, transferred here a year ago from Cerritos Junior College, another excellent program out in California. Willis and Holmes come to the near side. Rams go back to the I formation. Tony Alford. And Alford into the secondary, shy of midfield by a couple, but he got good yardage. Don Shell English on the stop. He gets his shoulders down. We'll watch Tony Alford coming in there. Gets those shoulders forward. Todd Yurt coming out here to get a good lead block. Get a good block right down on the, the lineman there. Baines. Pretty good pickup. Second and three. Ball at the 47-yard line of Colorado State. This is Paul Macronado. Not much doing. Maybe he got a yard. Brad Schmidt led a contingent of white jerseys for the Hurons. That particular defense for the Hurons, they were in what they call their Michigan defense, where one of the tackles sitting over the nose loops around, and he looped around. Guess where he ended up? Right where the ball carrier was coming. Good shot of Earl Bruce. First year at Colorado State, a career record of 133, 68-1. Nine years at Ohio State, he averaged nine wins a game. Rams out of the T formation. Here's the option. And no, sir, not a first down. Sean Shoda cut it down about a yard and a half shy. The Rams had to get to the 49 of Eastern Michigan. Crowd wants him to go for it, but I know Earl Bruce. He's going to punt this thing away with Tim Luke. You know, not only did the Hurons have that particular play defense drill, but they had a defense yesterday when we were out on the field watching them practice. They worked on that thing for about 15 minutes. Here's what you do in short yardage. They guessed right. Tim Luke is averaging better than 42 yards a punt this year. Charles Gordon took one back 91 yards a week ago against Ohio University. He's very dangerous. He'll get a shot here, and he calls for the fair catch, however. So just about the 17-yard line, Eastern Michigan will have it for the third time, and the first time they've had to start in their own territory. Would you say right now that this has been a bit of a surprise, though we're not out of the first quarter? Not, not entirely, because if you turn the football over twice, good things aren't going to happen on the scoreboard, one would figure. <laughs> Thirty-three remaining in the first quarter. Foster and Mario still the backs. Actually, Foster is checked out. This is Mitch Brown now with the ball. And he's bottled up about the line of scrimmage. David Grimes from his nose tackle position in there. Carl Hanks. Grimes slants right into the play. Uh, that time, the Rams were overloaded uh, to their right. And uh, there was no audible by Tom Sullivan. They hand off, and they tried to power that ball in there for no gain. Actually, that was Eric Shaler who made the stop. Shaler is starting on the nose, also plays left end. Second and ten. And we should get a flag on this particular play. And we do. Get a few of them. A little bit of movement by the right tackle that time of the Hurons. He's a little bit antsy. Let me give you that offensive line for Eastern Michigan. Right to left, it's Eric Toe, Mike Rowe, Gordy Johnstone, Mark McHugh, Kurt Davis. The tight end is Rob Fogarty. Second down and 15 after the penalty. Told you it was a good size offensive line. The EMU offensive line averages in the neighborhood of 265 pounds. They're about 22 pounds heavier per man than the defensive line for Colorado State. Todd Bell in motion. We have more flags down, and Brown is bottled up after a short game. Interesting enough, it looks like the uh, Rams would be offsides. But there was no whistle blown, and they stopped, and the Hurons continued to go on. They called it correctly, so they give the five yards back as Colorado State. You know, one of the things you have to be aware of out there 
uh, on the field, be it offense or defense, particularly the defensive ball players, you have to go until you hear a whistle. That time there was no whistle. They lacked, they lacked stuff, and uh, he could have broke that one for a big one. So you, you play until the referees tell you to stop. Eastern Michigan taking on Colorado State from Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. Eastern Michigan at 3-0, CSU at 1-2. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, Steve Alvarez with you. Tim Kellogg has checked in the ball game. He's the lone setback, and he gets the carry. He does a nice job out to the 25-yard line with a set up a third down and three. Dan Wilson from his free safety spot, the second leading tackler for the Rams, brought him down there. Mitch Brown, we'll see a lot of Mitch Brown when they get inside uh, uh, pay dirt territory, if you will, uh, the 10-yard line. He's normally the ball, uh, the player they like to get that ball to. This time they use him in a delayed draw. Picked up pretty good yardage there. He's a good-looking uh, running back. Third and three for Eastern Michigan. Single setback is Brown. Looks like he's calling an audible here. They come with the blitz. He lobs it to the outside. He's got a man. Big yardage to the bell. He could go the distance. 20, 10, forget about it. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. No flags are down. That's exactly what he did. Tom, Great. Tom Sullivan comes up. Really, he calls the audible. He saw him in a man. They were like, he's on the blitz. Got it out over there. He beat Harlan Carroll, Bell did, and he goes 76 yards for six. They knew exactly what they were looking for. You see the blitz coming in. Uh, talking to one of the coaches, he said, if they do blitz. We feel that we can beat them on the strong side. That's the strong side right there. They did exactly that. And you know the Hurons came in here not supposed to be a, not supposedly a fast team. That time no one could catch him getting down the sideline. Todd Bell was, I'd say, fast enough. <laughs> How fast do you have to be? Just fast enough. Now it wasn't an easy catch over the shoulder like that either. And again out of the hole to Stacy Stewart trying to tack on point number 14. He does so successfully, 14 to nothing with 2.15 to go in the first quarter. Eastern Michigan has been dominating Colorado State, not only up front, but also as far as making smart decisions. Sullivan, playing his day checked off. The Rams come with seven people on the blitz, and Harlan Carroll has beat badly. Beat badly, and he was uh, going to the strong side. Mitch Brown looking to pick up the weak side blitzer coming in. Boy, he just lets it out there. He knows exactly what he's going to get. He got it. Over the shoulder, uh, Todd Brown. That's not an easy catch. He catches it in stride, and there is no catching him. And how about this for Todd Bell, his first catch of the season. Not bad. Goes 76 yards. Not bad at all. Like a rookie coming up at the end of the season. First pitch, first bat, home run. He transferred in from Ferris State. He didn't play football there. Jim Harkema. Walking the sidelines, 47-year-old, seventh year, 32, 34, and three. There's the drive, three plays, 83 yards. Interesting approach to the ball with the kickoff team. Everyone huddle up there as though they're going to onside it, and then they fan out, if you will, and then get into a regular position. Lope to either Carr or Sean Willis. This will be Tony Carr at the five-yard line. Carr through the wedge and brought down shy of the 30-yard line. Fred McClendon coming down on special teams from Eastern Michigan. 6'4", 213-pound junior from Flint. Tony Carr, one of the fastest uh, ball players on the team, coming out of Thomas Jefferson High School, where he was all-world there as a tailback, uh, leading the state in rushing. If he gets loose, he can go the distance. So Jimenez with a rather ominous start today. Tries to get CSU going. He'll try to do it in the air initially. Swings it to Mark Holmes, and Holmes has his first catch of the year. I mentioned earlier, coming off a hamstring injury. Mike Danley brings him down inside linebacker. Safe pass here. Keep your running backs in. There's Todd Geert blocking for him. Good protection up front. Just lets it go. One of the things you have to do once a quarterback has had a shaky start, give him something easy to complete. Just come right over the middle, catch him in the zone, come underneath. Good completion there. Great confidence builder for uh, Jimenez. There's Holmes from Cherry Creek High School. Played for Fred Tassan. So many good players have come out of that program. 
one wide, it looked like this was the extension of Cherry Creek with two of their so many players. So good, Scott Whitehouse, who you saw last night back in town, played football in Italy this past offseason. Former all whack running back for Colorado State. The rules. The <laughs> brothers, yeah. That's right, all the rules. Steve Rule played at Cherry Creek. 2.01 to go in a rather and lethargic moving first quarter. Clock now wound up again. First and ten for the Rams. Alfred and Yurt are the backs. This is Todd Yurt. Yurt's got a couple to the 43-yard line. Three or four. And Macronado comes back in. Greg Primus come back in. Herman Bain and Fred McClendon defensively for the Hurons. There you go. A little bit of hand-holding there in the defense. Kind of reminiscent of the Broncos when Ray May brought that in. Seemed like everyone in the country does it now. This is Alfred on the delay, spinning ahead to the 50-yard line, the first down. Warner Blakely from his cornerback position stopped him, but a good run this time by Alfred. Good movement up by the line. They set up, and then they just fire out almost as they were a draw. Good lead block there. Tony Alfred, or, uh, yeah, Alfred gets up there pretty good. Good explosion. He gets his shoulders square, moving forward there kind of quickly. Good explosion by the, uh, what's it, junior now? Junior, junior from Darty High School in Colorado Springs. With 286 yards on the ground in three ball games, averaging just less than six yards a carry. Interesting, Earl Bruce has tightened up their offense, brought in a two tight end set, and they're just playing bash ball right now. We can look for a play action pass. Here we go. Alfred into the clear, into the secondary. Still going ahead to the 34 yard line. Another first down. And that's the kind of football Earl Bruce loves. Jerry Smith finally made the tackle. Up front, they just said, hey, nothing fancy. Let's just go. A little loop there by the Huron defense. And they loop right out of the position where he, uh, uh, Alfred was coming. He just runs over the safety there, continues going. That's a good run. That, that particular play, we see where he's averaging 95.3 rushing yards per game. Uh, he is the key to any success that the Rams are going to have here in this particular ball game. Willis goes wide to the top of your screen. Holmes to the near side. Jimenez to Holmes on the same play you saw a moment ago, and he's brought down after about seven or eight. And once again, Mike Danley brings Holmes to the, I was going to say to the turf, but it's to, uh, to the grass. <laughs> and thankfully for that. You can, still, on grass. you can still call it turf, however. Yes, you could, I suppose. And we have the end of the quarter here. The end of the first 15 minutes, it's been all Eastern Michigan. They're on top 14 to nothing. We'll return to Hughes Stadium. Collins, Colorado hasn't been that way as of yet for the Colorado State Rams. They're on the short end of a 14 to nothing score. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, Steve Alvarez with you. Todd Yurt barrels ahead to the 23-yard line and apparently another first down. Herman Bain, one of the large defensive tackles, 6'1", 256 from Garden Grove, California, brought him down. Total yards gives you an idea why it's 14 to nothing. Two turnovers also, and they only converted on one of two. They had a golden opportunity after an interception by Bob Navarro of the Jimenez pass, and they missed a 48-yard field goal. Sean Willis goes to the top. Mark Holmes in the slot. Good kick. Pulling the football in. Mark Holmes, third reception here. They go to him early. Early and often. Yeah. Uh, again, play action. They'll fake there to Tony Alford. And then again, you're going outside with it. Uh, the cornerback has no business looking at play action pass. Mark Holmes comes over. He had to come back for that ball. It was a bit to uh, the inside of him. That's a pretty good uh, catch there. Willis now near side, split eye formation. Alfred the deep back. Misdirection to Alfred. Uses his blockers well and hammers to the 10 yard line. That's what I love about Tony Alfred. He sticks his nose in there instead of dancing around. David Ostrander and Jerry Smith bring him down. But Tony Alford, much bigger than when we saw him a few years ago in high school. He's now 200 pounds, and he uses all of it. You can chalk up uh, that seven yards to pure determination. 
he went out there. There was nothing, a big pile up down there right around the, the 20. And uh, he just put his head down and got eight yards. Good, good uh, run there. Tony Carr has come in for him on first and goal. Macronado, big opening. Macronado, touchdown, Colorado State. Bruce has to be a bit happy. Just put it up front. Not really a good block coming down there by your pulling guard. This is all Macronado. He gets tackled there at about the four, drags him in. He got a good block by Doug Lindner, the right tackle closing down on the linebacker. However, that opened the initial seam. Mike Brown will be in to attempt the extra point. That'll hold of punter Tim Luke. And they go for two. This looked like a design play, and Luke gets in the end zone. 14 to 8. So Earl Bruce with a little trickery up his sleeve. How about that? That surprised everybody. That was by design because Sharico's snap was absolutely perfect. Perfect snap. This is designed to catch you by surprise. The Hurons have probably need, not seen a fake all year. Here it comes. The Rams have probably not tried it. They haven't tried it all year. There it is. Catch them off guard. So it is 14 to 8 in Colorado State within six. 13.41 to go in the second quarter. Very important drive for CSU. I mean, they played a, a rather lackluster first half, made a number of errors. They had to come back and get in the football game, and they go a long way and do that. Well, uh, not only did they come down and score, but I think their confidence is back. And hey, you know, let's get the first quarter behind us. Uh, you know, we just beat ourselves. Those were turnovers that gave them the, the 14 points, though they did earn one of the touchdowns. We can go out here and blow these guys out. Their confidence is back. Now let's see if they can uh, sustain it. Let's see if the Hurons now are going to fold under that. Macronado picks up 10 yards on the touchdown run. Nine plays, 72 yards for Colorado State. The trifecta back there, the man in the middle is Paul Powell. That's who Eastern Michigan would like to handle the football. Ransau has it in the air in the direction of Powell. Nope. Comes to the left of Stoitziatis. Stoitziatis across the 15. And brought down at the 24-yard line. There's the drive. Paul Macronado, the backup fullback, capping it off. Sullivan now Mitch Brown leaving the game and you see problems as far as changing personnel since they do it so frequently they had 12 guys in the huddle he's set now Perry Foster is the tailback Benziger goes in motion Sullivan to Foster not much doing closed down nicely by inside linebacker Eric Tipikane and with that let's find Steve Alvarez Steve where are you all right, Drew, we're on the Colorado State sideline right now, and uh, during the last series, the Rams were talking about problems with defensive signals. Tom Sullivan for Eastern Michigan is calling a lot of audibles. Well, they're not the only team that has to audibleize, so does the defense. And because of that, the Rams' defense was having problems in the first quarter with getting their formations correct. The coaches talked about holding your ground, waiting till the offense calls their play, then you call yours. We'll see if it works. Back up to you. It worked on that last play. It's second and ten. This is Foster. And he does well to pick up about a yard. Paul Hanks stood firm in his right end position. The 6'5", 232-pound junior from Hemingford, Nebraska. He's played very, very well. The best of the down linemen through the first three football games for Earl Bruce. You're getting good movement by that defensive line of Sharico, uh, Shaler, and Paul Hanks. They're sliding well, coming off of blocks of an offensive line that they're probably giving weight uh, about 20 pounds. But they're moving well, getting their hands on the blockers and skating up and down the line. Mitch Brown comes in the ball game, slot to the near side on third and eight. With the screen. Screen is set up, and the Rams have a defense very well. Foster didn't have much to go. Lance Ane came over 33, the senior from Saugus, California. So we will see Eastern Michigan punt for the first time 
and last week they had some trouble with the snap. Tom Schooler is the snapper, and he snapped one over the head of Monty Kirkland, who was punting last week. They've also made a change as far as punters are concerned. Jim Langlow, actually now Tim Hennigan is uh, the one who will punt the football. They've had any number of guys back there. Kirkland was averaging about 35, 36 yards a punt. We saw Langlow punt yesterday in practice, and this guy, Tim Hennigan. You know, one of the, the things to really watch is that the, the snapper, Tom Schooler, is only 6'1", 211 pounds, and normally you line up one of your big guys on there, just give him a pounding, make him think about what he's about to do, and a lot of times you do have an, an inerrant uh, pass. And they go after him. No flags are down. Bowman gets away from the football in a favorable role for the Hurons. Down to the 24-yard line of Colorado State. Matt Swank got down there on special teams. 52 yards on the boot plus the roll. 13 to nothing. Colorado State came back with a touchdown of their own after a long drive and then faked the extra point and was successful picking up two points. Jimenez to put it up. He's got all day to the outside and Sean Willis for about eight. Hammered by Werner Blakely right after the reception. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez. All right, thank you very much, Drew. You're looking at Tim Luke, the Rams punter, who had his moment of glory a moment ago, running in the extra point for two. I asked him just a little while ago, aren't you a little bit worried about when you get outside and you see the big guys twice your size coming at you? He said, oh, no, no. We practiced this all week. I was just praying that they would run it. A punter gets few moments of glory. Tim Luke was ready for his. Back up to you. Okay. Derek Buford stops Todd Yurt. Yurt picks up another first down for Colorado State, but I believe we have a flag down, Tom. No, it, uh, I was just saying it looked like Macronado was. Oh, is it Macronado? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's any problems with uh, Yurt. Macronado seeing an awful lot of time right now, but uh, look like Yurt is back in there right now. They rotate those guys. Well, actually, Jimenez, that's uh, misleading. He is five for five. The only problem is one of his passes was to Bob Navarro. And Navarro's in the Eastern Michigan jer jersey. Excuse me. Flagged down on that play as Alfred loses a couple. Craig Peters mark. Got in there and stopped it, but let's sort this one out. Tim Luke's a pretty good athlete. He played, I believe, linebacker and tight end at Wheat Ridge High School, where Dave Logan was a star a few years back. Offsides against the defense. That's a strange combination, being a linebacker and a punter. And he's done an excellent job as a punter. He's averaging about 43 yards. The Hurons were off sides that time, and so that'll make it first and five uh, for the Rams. Lucky for them because they had lost about four yards on the play. Doug Linder was unable to get out to the corner to get a block for Alfred. There's a penalty situation. Sean Willis to the near side. Mark Holmes in the slot. Tony Alfred is the deep back. And Jimenez hit down at the 38. Picks up a couple. That's the difference between him and Verdugo. He does have the ability to scramble out of trouble and run the football. You'll see some option today from Colorado State, which you would not see with Kevin Verdugo, who still has that sore shoulder. It's coming along some, but not as quick as they had hoped. He heard it against Colorado. Jimenez led the football team to victory last week against Cal State Fullerton. Verdugo's not suited up today. That was not his choice to run on that one, though. He was looking downfield all the way. Second and four. Alfred. He has the first down. Nearly lost the football as he crossed the 45-yard line, got it back. Jerry Smith, strong safety, who switches off quite a bit with John Stoitziatis. Two of the leaders of the defense. Again, the theory behind using a two-platoon system, and it's not just because of the altitude. Parkman does this every week. He believes later in the year, if we have an injury, the guy I put in the game has had plenty of playing experience. He, he does it to uh, really build up the quality quickly in his uh, backup team. Jimenez got a man brought down at the 20-yard line. 
Rodney Bowman, big gainer. Jerry Smith saved the touchdown. Jerry, Jerry Smith, the rover, uh, the play action pass. He's looking right in there. Right now, Jerry Smith says, oh, it's not a run. He has to get back out to the flank. By then, boy, he is in trouble. He has to save this one. 32 yards on the hookup from Jimenez to Rodney Bowman, the senior from Compton, California. First and 10 Rams at the 20-yard line. And I believe they got a wake-up call a few minutes ago from Earl Bruce. This is Bowman on the inside handoff, and he slips down after about four. Closing fast was Charles Gordon, senior from East Lansing, four-year starter in the secondary for Harkema. Right now, the Hurons are having so much thrown at them. They're getting different looks now just about on every play. They're off balance. That defensive line now can't just tee off, come up there, and just try to wreak havoc against the offensive line. They're having to read more, and it's caused some problems with the Hurons. Primus, Greg Primus in the ball game, flanked out to the near side. Bowman is in the slot. Tony Alford bouncing. Still going to about the 12-yard line, shy of a first down. Bob Navarro brought him down there. Junior from Jenison, Michigan. Let's pick up Tony Alford. You like to see this. Adam Whitmer giving a little block there. You like to see where your running back just doesn't go down, put his head down, but he sees exactly what he's doing. Bounces out to the outside, picks up four yards. I think Tony Alford has picked up probably 20 yards on second effort already. I would agree with that. Big down here, third and three. They go with the full house backfield. Yurt pounds it close to the first down, but I don't think he got there. I think he was stopped about the 11-yard line. They needed to get to about the 10. Sean Shota led the brigade. The crowd getting involved here wants Earl Bruce to go for it. He has his kicking unit huddled with him. You might see him call a timeout now. He might want to get a timeout to make his decision. There he is. Good call, Tom. That's exactly what Bruce wants. Integral situation here in the first half. 7.02 to go before intermission. The Rams trail 14 to 8. It's fourth down and a full yard, if not a little bit more, for the first down. And if I have to believe if you're going to call a timeout, that means you're going for it. And you just want to make sure you have the right play. <laughs> that hopefully is what it means. Cats of Colorado State will be on hand to bring it to you on Prime Sports Network, an affiliate of Prime Network. One of the things that the Rams have done, they've come up in short yardage twice in a full house backfield. Both times they have been stopped. They've had the most success, their best success, with spreading out that front four of the Hurons getting them spread out, and then going out and attacking. Well, they've talked it over, and they've elected to go for three. At least they will line up as if they will go for three. Tim Luke, that guy's in the ball game again. The whole Mike Brown is also in there. He's the place kicker for Colorado State. You know, we had an interview with Earl Bruce oh, about a week and a half ago, and one of the things he said is that he was very conservative and he saw no problem with it. He's going for the three points. From 28 yards away, Brown has it up and through. So now a 14 to 11 ball game with 6.56 to go in the second quarter. You know, it's a... Uh... So the Rams go 65 yards in nine plays, 28-yard field goal by Mike Brown. They are within three points of Eastern Michigan, 14 to 11. That's Peter Ransau. Paul Powell flanked by John Stoitsiatis and also Dan Bennett, number five. This is Powell at the three. And he's out to the 25-yard line. And let's go down to Steve Alvarez. Steve? 
Thank you, thank you very much. Drew, you talk about players playing hurt. Well, so are some of the Ram cheerleaders. This young lady's just had a knee operation. You did this cheerleading, didn't you? Yeah, I was at, we were at cheerleading camp in Park City, Utah, and I was tumbling out to perform, and I dislocated my knee. You see, all the action doesn't take place between the sidelines. Another cheerleader here with a bad knee. She's got in a brace. We've got to get these girls in a better conditioning program. Too many of them going down with injuries, but I do good and credit for coming out, sucking it up, playing tough. Back up to you. Steve, might you conduct that class? Yes, well, it's a possibility. Yes, I'll add my influence to it, I'm sure. Rams show blitz, and they come. on A's picked up. Sullivan picked off. Donovan Gans, the freshman from Orange, Texas, with a huge play. He rumbles to the 16-yard line. Maria was the intended receiver. Earl Bruce goes with a true freshman, and the young man responds. Boy, that'll get you excited as a defense. Here comes on A. He almost jumps off sides. Uh, boy, he really had that offensive line, and they're kind of worried. A sprint out to your left was a very difficult play. Gans gets right in front of uh, Murillo. He just about could have gotten down there with one block. He could have taken this one all the way in. There's one excited freshman right there. Only the second INT thrown by Tom Sullivan this year. Rams in business at the 17. Alford inside the 15 to about the 14 yard line brad schmidt bottled him up along with a number of other white jerseys herman bain one of them alfred getting up limping a bit but you like his toughness drew he's still in there he'll stick it up in there rams having trouble getting the play from the sideline now they do Second clock winding down inside of 12. Jimenez end zone picked off in the end zone. Werner Blakely stuffs that drive, and as I was looking in the end zone, he had Sean Willis wide open down the middle, and he threw it to coverage. Second pick thrown by Jimenez today. Well, here's a real problem right here. Tony Alford got up limping noticeably. He is the one. He's the intended receiver here. They should have called a timeout or gotten him off the field if he's going to be the intended receiver. He was not at full force going down for that particular pass. Big play for the sophomore from Henry Ford High School in Detroit. In a case like that, Drew, the coaches up in the box, they have to get it down there, relay it real quickly that something is wrong and call a timeout or do something. It's a bad read by Jimenez. Murillo puts his 240-plus pounds forward a couple of yards. Lance Sané met him there. 5.46 as the clock rolls towards halftime. There is Earl Bruce. What do you think Earl's telling him down there? And he's telling him bad reads, son. Sean Willis broke free on the post pattern. No one within five yards of him either way. This, this play was a call all the way. He was looking for Tony Alford all the way. Second down and six. Eastern Michigan out of the ace formation. Perry Foster on the delay. And he gets near a first down on the 30-yard line. Ane tripped him up. Foster's been a little quiet since uh, the first quarter where he was really picking up the yardage, you know, by the handful now. We'll see if they'll get him back in the offense. He's been their most dangerous offensive weapon uh, thus far. They stretch the sticks after the gain of six yards. It'll be another first down for Eastern Michigan. Tom, off the top, you said Colorado State to win this football game cannot turn it over, something they've had the propensity to do in the past. And today they already have three. One led to a touchdown for EMU, and one probably took points away from them. That last interception by Jimenez. Whistles blow this one dead, and that completion will go for naught. Probably a delay of game. It was quite a long time there. He was he was checking off again at the line. There he goes. He was checking off again. He saw a blitz coming, and he wanted a man-on-man -man situation. He just said, send in the play. Tom Sullivan, get me the play. Get it in here quicker. Both teams have had some problems from the sidelines getting their plays in. 
Five penalties, 25 yards now on the Hurons. Big cutback and a pretty good gain across the 30 for Mitch Brown. Balls on the ground. Let's see. We're going to give it to Colorado him. State gets the football back. Tippeconic. The referees were a little slow in calling. He gets the ball deep in the eye, makes a quick cutback. He sees the hole open up. Puts his head down, and then he is stripped. See the ball come out? He is stripped. I mean, that's easy. His pocket was picked. Taking the ball, never hit the ground. Tippeconic didn't even try to take Mitch Brown to the ground. He just went for the football. There's a little option. Jimenez with some room and bumped out of bounds about the 23-yard line. A pickup of seven. Smith ushered him out at that point. Mike Jimenez from Woodland, California, a junior. The cousin of Craig Penrose, who played for a while with the Broncos. Remember Craig well. Mac Renato's back in the ball game. Look for him to be a part of this offense. That's Steve Sabo, defensive coordinator for the Rams. Big yardage to the outside. Mac Renato keeps his feet and goes out at the 11-yard line. Keeping his balance by the fullback. You know, it's interesting. You have the deep setback here, and it is not Alfred Acar, but it's Mac Renato. He gets around that corner pretty good, gets pretty good block. Almost a clip there by Bowman, but look, he keeps his feet going, picks up an extra four yards. That's a great run. Mac Renato, only 200 pounds of fullback, a junior from San Diego. Typical of many WAC players, a bit undersized, but doing a lot with Hart. Here's Alfred. And he rummages inside the 10 to the 9. Tom Schooler, first time we've called the outside linebacker's name in a while. Schooler's the leading tackler for Eastern Michigan, 92. There's a flag down on the ground. It'll be interesting to see what, uh, what happens. It's offside against Eastern Michigan. I'm sure Colorado State would take that penalty because the gain wasn't anywhere near five yards. 3.59 to go before halftime, 14 to 11, Eastern Michigan. If you are just joining us, Eastern Michigan broke out to a 14-0 lead on a long pass play, and also after a turnover, they went a short distance, 31 yards. CSU came back with a long drive, and then a drive of about 60 yards to pick up three points. The reason it's 11 is CSU ran a fake extra point, and Tim Luke, the holder, ran it in for a two-point conversion. First and five at the seven. Tony Carr now in a tailback. This is Yurt, and he's down to about the four-yard line. Mike Danley got a hold of him there. Right down here right now, it's beef against beef. The offensive line against the defensive line. And you just have to, you know, don't get too fancy down here. Don't get smart. Just go in there and try and overpower the guy in front of you. Get movement uh, as an offensive line against the defensive line. Give your running back a chance to get up ahead of steam. Get into the end zone. You can't get too fancy down here. Second down and two. Alfred checks back in, and he gets the call. And Tony Alfred driving end zone. Touchdown. All on his own from the two-yard line in. formation. Whitmer comes out, blocked by Macronado. Good block there. Well, he just meets the safety and the linebacker. He takes them in. Great call. One of the things that the Rams did that was so great is that they didn't go into short yardage and cause the defense to bunch up. Keep them spread out. Was able to go in there and get man-on-man -man blocking. Good play that time. This time they do indeed kick the extra point. Brown has it straight through, and the Rams for the first time break out on top. 18 to 14 with 3.04 to go before intermission. 18 unanswered points for Colorado State. Let's check the college scoreboard. 
Notre Dame leading Michigan 7 0 in the first. Miami 7 0 over Missouri. That's Miami of Florida in the first. Final score Clemson has beaten Maryland 31 7, or at least they lead late in the fourth quarter. Alabama, 15th ranked team in the nation, leading 9 3 at home against Kentucky. North Carolina State, number 18, 40 0 over North Carolina. Wyoming in a surprise in the second quarter, leading number 19, Washington State, 10 to nothing. Paul Rhodes seems to have gotten that program turned around after an 0-2 start. Illinois, number 20, after the shellacking last week by Colorado, up on Utah State, 24 to nothing. That a second quarter score. Air Force doing it to UTEP, 25 to nothing before halftime. New Mexico leads Tulsa, 7 to nothing. Tulsa favored at home. Boston College, 3 to nothing over Penn State in the third quarter. Joe Paterno having his problems this year. Give you a few others in a moment. But right now, Peter Ransau ready to kick it deep to Eastern Michigan. Paul Powell from his goal line. He's got a big opening. Powell across the 40-yard line and knocked down at midfield. Wilson, the safety, had to knock him down. Four plays, 30 yards after the Tippeconic fumble recovery. Tony Alford got the honors. 51 yards on that return to the CSU 49. You know, you like to see this. You almost saw a 100-yard uh, kickoff return there. He does this mostly on his own. There's not too many blocks. There's not too many green shirts on the ground. Murillo is the lone setback. Sullivan under pressure, puts it up. He's got a man wide open to the 18-yard line. John Pfeiffer, a junior wide receiver from Fairfield, Ohio. Selwyn Jones brought him down there, but a pickup of near 30. Good protection, though he does get hit by Sharika when he releases the ball. You're in a double zone there, and Carroll, is, he's slow getting over there. He is late. You know, this is the second long pass against on that side of the defense. I'm not going to say against Carroll because he was in a zone the second time. But, boy, they have some signals that are getting mixed up over there. Dan Bennett crosses the line of scrimmage. Perry Foster into the secondary. Still going inside the 15 to perhaps the 13. Guys worked a sweat up. That gentleman's earned it. Tony Alfred, junior from Darty High School in Colorado Springs. But back to live action. Not that Tony wasn't live there. Sullivan directing Eastern Michigan deep in Colorado State territory. This is Foster again. First down to about the eight-yard line. He's right at the sticks. On that particular play, the Hurons, Eastern Michigan, was able to just beat the left side of the Ram defensive line, just beat them off the ball, just sealed off that entire side of the uh, defense, enabled him to get out there and get that first down. Plenty of time to go before intermission, 158. They will come over and measure it. You know, the offensive line, as we mentioned earlier in our opening group, was uh, as we look at Earl Bruce there, Earl is saying, what in the world is going on out there, defense? You let him march down the field, and you know, you're flagging him down. This is not touch football. And the guy who has to answer the questions was the gentleman on the left, Steve Sabo. He's a defensive coordinator. We saw a couple of weeks ago, we saw the long return on the kick by Powell. A couple of weeks ago, MJ Nelson for CU brought a couple of kicks back a long way against the Colorado State special teams. It is a first down, so it's first and goal, ball inside the eight. Pfeiffer goes wide to the top. Dan Bennett wide out to the near side. Foster and Murillo in the backfield. This is Foster trying to change direction, and he's going to be in a bit of trouble at the nine-yard line. Lance on eight came up with a helmet. The only time you want to attract that much green is this ball over money. Yes. You don't want to see the defense coming at you like that. He attracted a crowd. Just his handoff here, he wanted to come back. As so many great backs do, they have great vision. Eric Dickerson, you remember him? Get the ball deep, come back, but uh, you got to get some help out there. Your offensive line has to be able to move the guys off the ball. 
Second and goal at the eight, Eastern Michigan calls a timeout. There are the numbers on Perry Foster. He's had over 100 the last couple of weeks. Well, coming up tonight on Prime Network, the Pac-10 game of the week. Washington will play the University of Colorado next weekend, travels to Arizona. Arizona knocked off Oklahoma 6-3 last weekend. It comes your way live at 7.30 Central. That's tonight on Prime Network. Washington, the Huskies undefeated and nationally ranked against Arizona. It's going to be a tough ball game down there, Jason. Yes, it will. Do you think the uh, team down the street is looking at that one with interest, the Buffalo? I imagine they are. Colorado idle this week. Perry Foster is the lone setback. Bennett and Pfeiffer are the wide outs to the top. Dan Benziger to the near side. This is the throwing formation. 148 to go before halftime. He safety blitz. Foster tripped from behind. Robert Chirico got him. Jersell did come on the blitz from his strong safety slot. Sullivan was checking off here. Just give the ball, get a surge. Now you see what messed that play up right there. You had too much from uh, Shaler coming in. Eric Shaler got too much penetration. Was able to keep the guards from getting out. Big down here, third and goal. End zone touchdown. Patrick Walsh, the transfer from Boston College. From Northeastern Massachusetts, Northeastern. Gets the touchdown and back on top goes Eastern Michigan. Good play down here. Not a play action pass. Here comes the blitz. He read it all the way. Tight end comes out and gets open. How he got open, well, you see the linebacker falls down. Walsh originally went to uh, Boston College. He left there because of, well, he didn't like the program, and then when he left and went home then his mother died and then he spent two years out of football and he's come back and they think that he's going to be a, a starter for him by the end of the year he's got great size 6'4 232. tom sullivan checking off at the line of scrimmage here he is he's looking over he sees the blitz coming he's right now and they they said to the strong side they would exploit the defense of the rams and all of the checkoffs have been an exploitation. They've had great success going to the strong side. They leave a zone. The linebackers go there. They don't cover that particular zone. They leave it wide open. There's a void, and they're running right to it. Earl Bruce says, welcome to the whack. <laughs> 38 points on the board right now, pending either a single extra point or an attempt for two. And might wonder if Eastern Michigan goes for two or fakes it. As we come to you today from Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. Well, after taking that timeout, you know they won't fake it. Well, the the extra point this. would make it a three-point differential. If they were to be successful for two, it would be a four-point. It looks like Hannigan's going to kick it. And he does so successfully. 21 to 18 with a minute 14 to go in the first half. Eastern Michigan back on top. That was an impressive drive, and it was all set up by Paul Powell's 51-yard kick return. You know, that was with, what, 2.25 left to go? Thereabouts, about two and a half minutes left to go. You don't let the uh, opposition come down the field. You don't let them just move the ball at that ease. But then it's not as difficult as it would be if they can start at the 50-yard line. Just a 49-yard drive. Sullivan hit his tight end, Walsh, for pay dirt be interesting now to see what Earl Bruce decides to do there's plenty of time on the clock he has one timeout with which to work I think a lot will be determined by the kickoff return how far do they get down the field if it's inside the 20 I think they'll let the clock run if they get past the 35 they might try and get down there for a field goal six plays 49 yards and just a minute 48 pretty efficient use of the clock Saw Jim Harkum a moment ago last week with his 30-25 victory over Ohio University. Picked up career victory at number 100. And his senior quarterback's having a pretty good day. Six of nine is Sullivan for 112 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Willis and Carr back deep. 
Lope hits the football. Sean Willis from the nine. And spun around at the 25-yard line. 109 to go. Fred McClendon down on special teams for EMU. So with 111 or 109 to go, you think they'll put it up. Jimenez has thrown two interceptions early on. The formation suggests that they will do that. In and out of the hands and then nearly picked off. He was trying to get it to Bowman. Werner Blakely almost had his second pick of the day. I guess the big question now is will they come back and still put it up? He's looking all the way. Here's one of the problems that Jimenez is having right now. He's looking at that receiver. He's not looking anyone off. You know, the catch is a catchable ball. He should have caught it, but then it almost ended up in the wrong hands. Is Earl Bruce seen too much? They come out now in the eye. Todd Yurt, the up back, out for the tail. Well, play action. Good throw, Sean Willis, reception, 38-yard line. First down, Gordon, good coverage. To give you an idea how off sync they are, you get a play action pass into Tony Alford. Tony Alford, he runs across the middle. Guess what? He missed that ball by two inches. He reached his hand up to try and get that ball. He should have been nowhere near that. 55 seconds, clock stopped after the first down. Now they crank it up. Jimenez throws the ball low and it's incomplete. Jimenez still out of sync. He didn't have to throw that ball down low. He wants to get it up high where the receiver could turn and make positive yardage, and Alfred couldn't come up with it. He hurried his throw that time. Uh, I think he's worried too much about, it, about the pressure that's coming. You have to trust your offensive line that they're going to be there to protect you. If you get hit, you got to understand that it wasn't intentional. You know, that's what you tell, you know, kids at Pop Warner. They're not going to let you get hurt, so don't worry about it. He's hearing footsteps right now. Well, they don't have a sack yet. Good protection this time, and that was ill-advised. Fred McClendon nearly went the distance. If he held on to that football, he was gone. He closed fast. Greg Scott was the intended receiver, the tight end. There's great protection. Now, at that time, Greg Scott is at fault. You know, He's he got to keep going. He has to keep going. He has to go right through for the ball and not worry about a defender that's coming up. What we call that is short-arming. He short-armed that pass. He heard the footsteps coming in. We got a timeout. Jimenez will go to the sideline. Seven of 12, two interceptions. Now, they've, they've used a minute to get eight yards. You know, that's not efficient time, you know, use of the clock. They did pick up one first down. Drive started. At the 25-yard line, 42 seconds left before halftime. It's 21-18, Eastern Michigan. Uh, coming at, well, I'll tell you about this in a moment. Earl Bruce gathered with Jimenez and sends Rodney Bowman back into the ball game. Coming up next week on Prime Sports Network, the Kansas Jayhawks will host the Oklahoma Sooners. Dave Armstrong and Irv Brown will be there to bring it to you from Lawrence, Kansas. Comes your way Saturday night, 12.30 Central. Then again, a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central, right here on Prime Network, Oklahoma and Kansas. And the Jayhawks off to a pretty good start, 2-1. and one. Toss sweep, reverse to Bowman. He's got the, the corner. And tripped up at the 49-yard line. First down, Charles Gordon made a good open field tackle there. 33 seconds with the clock stopped. While they get it spotted. Drew from up here near the clouds where we are. It looked like he had his wall. It looked like he was going to get a lot further, but there was good pursuit by the defense of Eastern Michigan. Gordon, the near side corner, stayed home nicely. To the outside and too far for Alford. Breaking in front again, trying to get the interception was McClendon. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez. Steve. 
Thank you very much, Drew. This has been a tough half for Colorado State because it started out like a nightmare. They regrouped, and then suddenly they let Eastern Michigan march down the field, and now they have to go in the locker room at halftime, at least with 27 seconds left, down again. So a, a demoralizing half. And interestingly, Earl Bruce, as you said so many times, a conservative coach, they ran the reverse. He certainly would like to tie the score before the half because uh, his team is down mentally right now after letting Eastern Michigan get back in it. Back up to you. Okay, Steve, thanks very much. And the ball was never snapped, but everybody but Mike Padilla thought the play should have been started. Mike Padilla, of course, the center. And if he doesn't snap it, it won't start. It won't start. <laughs> Most important guy in the stadium. We'll probably get a look at him. Here he is. Most important guy, Mike Padilla. Had an opportunity to play with his dad. And there he goes. I'm not going to snap this one. I think I'll keep it. Padilla. Evidently, he didn't hear it was on the first sound, or evidently, he didn't hear the first sound. 27 seconds still. Second down and 15. Inside handoff, still going. Tony Carr slips down at the 46-yard line. Tried to spring free. Charles Gordon was the nearest defender. They have to huddle up quickly. Clock moving, 12-11. And they get it stopped with five seconds to go. Way too far for a field goal chance. Imagine we will see the Hail Mary. I think Mary will show up. It worked last year. Sean Willis, right before halftime, a similar situation, caught a Hail Mary pass and went the distance for a touchdown. You know, I think what I would do, though, uh, in a situation like this is try and get Right then, they just saw the looseness of a Tony Carr. I try to get him something over the middle, a screen or, or something like that, as opposed to throwing it downfield. Bowman and Scott split out. He has it. Gets it to Carr. Carr in the open field will be brought down as the half comes to the end. At the 25-yard line. So we're at intermission. 21 to 18 Eastern Michigan. They opened up a 14 to nothing lead. CSU came back with 18 of their own and then the drive just a few moments ago and the pass to Walsh, the tight end for a touchdown. It's 21 to 18. Typical WAC football game. Now you have the WAC in the MAC. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if WAC stands for wacky or not, but uh, you know, you thought that this would be a cut and dry game. It would all happen right down there on the ground. You, you know, one offensive line versus another, but you've had turnovers involved here. You've had a long kickoff return. Uh, you don't know, you know, right now, you know, you're still waiting for the dust to settle on this one. 21-18 at intermission. We will try to get down to Steve Alvarez in a moment. CSU, just a, an awful start with the turnovers. And, uh, of course, they had the fumble, and then Jimenez threw an interception. They were very fortunate to put those last points on the board because Jimenez had thrown another interception. They did get it back after a, a fumble. There's been a few turnovers. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez with Coach Earl Bruce. Steve? Thank you very much, Drew. Earl, a disastrous first half. It started out like a nightmare. You got back into it, and then they drive down on the field. Well, they're... Our defense isn't playing very well, Steve. It's playing terrible. I'm a little disappointed. We're going to have to do something at halftime to shut that down. 21 points is more than they've ever scored in the first half of a football game, and that's not good for us. And we got to do something about that. They kept the ball too long on us, and we got to make. Uh, they made some mistakes, and we threw some interceptions. And uh, Jimenez is going to have to hold on to the football a little bit. We're going to have to do some more stuff. Their quarterback making a lot of audibles at the line of scrimmage. Is that bothering your defense? I don't know. They're they're doing some checking off, but really, it's our coverage that's hurting us. Earl, thanks for stopping to talk. Okay, Earl Bruce, as he said, that defense allowing Eastern Michigan much too much, 21 points, the most they've ever had at a half. So Colorado State has the halftime to try and figure out what to do defensively. I think, interestingly, even with all the turnovers, Colorado State's still very much in this ball game. So at the half, it's Eastern Michigan 21, Colorado State 18. We'll be back after this. Intermission Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins along with Tom Graham. I'm Drew Goodman. 21 to 18, a game, a number of turnovers, and a number of outstanding plays by tailbacks. Perry Foster and Tony Alford have had good days as we would have expected. We, we expected that, but one of the things that we really didn't expect is the back and forth. We thought that one team would come out 
uh, establish supremacy in the ball game and then take it from there. But then it's going back and forth. We're 14 nothing, then all of a sudden 18-14, and now you go down what 21-18 or whatever it is. You know, you never expected that type of a, a ball game. And Earl Bruce had just said that as he went off before halftime. He said Eastern Michigan has never scored 21 points and a half yet this year, so he's disappointed at least defensively. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez with the director of athletics at Colorado State. Steve. Thank you, Drew. Oval James joins us here on the sideline. You went and got yourself a primetime head coach in Earl Bruce, and I think the fans are already seeing a major impact by that man. Well, there's no question that Coach Bruce is a, you know, he's a great football coach, and uh, I think in time here we'll have the kind of program that our alumni and their fans all across the state and throughout the region will be, uh, will rally around and, and come to see. It takes time to get all the quality kids you need. But even this early, I think just the change in attitude is quite evident. Well, it, it is. Uh, we've really played, uh, you know, three really tough football games coming into today. And Eastern Michigan, got to give them credit. They're playing awfully hard today. But, uh, you know, um, I just hope that we, good things happen to us and that we don't look past this second half to Air Force next week. You mentioned good things. Your basketball team last year, sensational, went to the NCAA playoffs. What effect? Are you still feeling the effect from that trip, and does it carry over also to the football program? Well, I think any time that you win in your programs, it, it carries over into all your programs. And uh, we've been very fortunate last year. We did have a great year in our women's programs. We won two championships in swimming and, and softball. And then our, our women's volleyball team for the sixth straight year went to the NCAAs. And then men's basketball came on and had a great year. And, board and uh, the guys did a great job so uh, we're excited about it and I, I think that same enthusiasm will carry over to the other sports as well all right chance for a little promo we'll be back here next week with the air force game you got a pretty good crowd in this one i think next week you'll probably be be packed because uh, it's a great whack matchup well steve right now we have about 800 reserve seats left and we'll open up the bank seating next week and uh, we hope we have it uh, you know we'd like to set an all-time attendance record but it'll be a great game next week but Right now, uh, we got to worry about Eastern Michigan. Okay, thanks, Oval. Thanks for joining us. Thank Oval you James, much. the athletic director, typical athletic director, thinking about next week, but still worried about this half of football coming up. Drew? Okay, as well he should be, 21-18 right now. CSU on the downside of that scoreboard. Kevin Verdugo's out with a bad shoulder. Mike Jimenez, it was a close battle in the spring. It was a close battle in the fall. Verdugo wins the job. The better thrower of the two, Jimenez looks like he's hesitant a little bit in the air, and he's made a couple of bad decisions. Well, he's hesitant. It looks like he is worried too much about what's coming at him at the flanks. As I mentioned earlier, he's going to have to trust those offensive tackles to keep the ends off of him, and he's going to have to keep his feet uh, steady. He can't get up there and get happy feet like he's been doing. And I think one of the things that they might do to really adjust that thing is say, hey, we have run the ball down and we've, we've moved the ball well against uh, the EMU. Maybe that's what we're going to have to do is come back because Jimenez doesn't look like he's all there today. Maybe just say, okay, offensive line, Tony Alford, Tony Carr, uh, Yurt, Macronado, you're going to have to do it because it seems like more times than not, when that ball goes up in the air, there's been a disaster. They'll also defensively have to stop Eastern Michigan. We knew he was a good one. He can do it. You got a seal block on the outside, Drew. He waltzes in. Uh, the defense that time, they bunched up too much. They read the wrong keys. Sullivan, a little later on, the blitz was on on third and three, and he goes up top to Todd Bell, and he finds him. Well, he goes up top. What he did is he audibilized on the line, which he's been doing a lot in the first half. He caught him blitzing. They said they were going to exploit the strong half of the defense. They did it. There he goes. And at that point, it was 14 to nothing Eastern Michigan. But Jimenez brought his club back from the 10-yard line. He hands off to Paul Macronado, and Macronado makes a nice move. 10 yards, and then the last four, he had to take in two defenders with him. Uh, good vision that time by a fullback. Didn't put his head down, didn't uh, just give it away. He decided to get that extra, and he got it. And he did. And here is the fake extra point. It was a great snap. This was by design. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Luke being a linebacker, so he knows what it's like to get hit. He's not afraid. He gets the ball in there. You know, you only need uh, three or four yards. He got it. He did a nice job, the junior from Wheat Ridge High School. Then a drive stalled, and Mike Brown added a 28-yard field goal. After they were stopped, he called the timeout. It was fourth and a yard and a half, and Earl Bruce said, I'd better send in the kicking team. When we saw the conservative Earl Bruce come out, and as we talked to him, he says, yes, I'm conservative. What's wrong with that? He proved it right here that he was conservative. And you know the thing about it? He looked good. They made the kick. 14-11 at that point, and then after a long drive, Tony Alford, much of it on his own, 
to put the Rams up at that point, 18 to 14. You know, he has been impressive, Drew. He puts his head down. You really like him. He bulls in. You know, that's a strong run. You have to like that. Six foot, 180 pounds, actually really about 5'11", and uh, excuse me, 200 pounds, not 180 pounds, he's 180 pounds a year ago, he's put a lot of weight on. Then about a minute and a half to go in the half, Sullivan checks off again, makes a good read here and finds his tight end. You know, what I really like is they're giving him a lot of liberty there at the line to be able to call it off if he wants to, and uh, he comes in and finds Walsh, you know, the big tight end, opening the end zone, linebacker fell down uh, right off to the left of the screen, we can't see it, but, you know, it's an easy catch. And that's where we stand, 21 to 18. First half numbers look like this. CSU dominating a bit on the ground. The passing total's the same. I think the biggest stat, without question, Tom, is the turnovers. Well, in, in any ball game, that's going to always be a key. You don't really expect it, you know, with Earl Bruce, because that's the one thing that he emphasizes. And yet, you know, within the first quarter, you already have two, and they've capitalized on them. And, but one thing they have done is they've come back, and they forced some turnovers, too. So you have to like that to try and even the scale out. But uh, you know, that puts them high. And right now, you can't say that the Rams are a catch-up team, and I think they showed there uh, coming back with a minute and 14 to go that, you know, they'd rather not be behind. Slight advantage in time of possession of Colorado State. Earl Bruce in the second half, one would imagine, really wants to hold on to the football and grind it out, as you talked about with Tony Alford, with Carr coming in there, with Yurt and Macronado, and not give Jimenez an opportunity. He's a little off today. You know, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And a coach, I think, will come in and say, okay, here's what worked for us. And what worked for us was driving that ball right down their throat is what they did on a couple of drives. And, you know, you give, and then you see the power of a Macronado, a Todd Yurt. You see the elusiveness and also the power of Tony uh, Alfred coming in there. You have to like that. And you say, hey, well, all's not lost. We still have an opportunity. Let's just run the ball. Defensively, though, Colorado State has had their problems. What do they have to do here in the second? Looking like a pro when they come up there at him. He reminds me of old Dan Fouts. So I think I would just kind of lay off and just play heads up. Don't get too fancy. Play heads up, good, solid defense. Right now in the locker room, I imagine one Vance Bedford, who is a secondary coach from Colorado State, is getting after his young guys right now. <laughs> 21 to 18 at intermission. Tom and I and Steve Minutes. Plenty of college football going on around the country. Notre Dame at home in South Bend in the first quarter leads Michigan State 7 to nothing. Miami of Florida, not Miami of Ohio, 7 to nothing over Missouri. That in the first half. Michigan and UCLA later on. Clemson pounding Maryland 31 to 7. Number 15 Alabama leading Kentucky 9 to 3 in the fourth. North Carolina State, number 18 in the country, putting a hurt on North Carolina, 40 to nothing. Washington State and Wyoming up in Laramie, just about an hour north of here, 10 to nothing Wyoming. Utah State at Illinois, number 20 team in the nation. Illinois, the Fighting Illini, up 24 to nothing in that ball game. A couple other scores for you. Air Force leading UTEP before intermission, 25 to nothing. New Mexico on the road against Tulsa, leading 7 to nothing. Boston College and Penn State, 3 to nothing. BC, the Eagles beating the Nittany Lions at this point. Running the ball and also in catching it. And Tom Sullivan, I think if, he's, if they're patient and if they continue to move the ball, then the Rams are going to force themselves into mistakes by blitzing. And Sullivan has shown the capability that he can read it, pick it up, call the audible, and he's been very good. He's two for two in calling audibles off the blitz. One hooked up for 76 yards and a touchdown to Todd Bell. And then right before the half, he hit his tight end, Patrick Walsh, after checking off at the line of scrimmage. Eastern Michigan came in undefeated at 3-0, though Parkamo was not happy with the pass protection. CSU, with the exception of Robert Chirico having a hurry, haven't been close. They haven't been close at all. And which is a surprise because the offensive line, their offensive line, as they say, much maligned. You know, they haven't been able to keep anything. They're like a refrigerator, can't keep a thing. Well, that's where they've been. But so far tonight, today, they have been doing a very good job. You know, Sullivan, is he's having all the time that he needs. On defense, they play a 4-3, a stunt 4-3. George Perlis at Michigan State came up with this defense, and I guess it's all in the family in the state of Michigan because Jim Harkema uses it, and they haven't done a bad job. They have some big folks up front. Well, they're, they're big enough. They go about 265 right across that front, and so you, you, they're not getting pushed off of the ball either. They're holding their own on heads-up contact, and they're not getting a lot of movement backwards. They're doing pretty well. I think one of the things that's really happening, too, is that the Hurons have come in here. They're, you know, they had the idea that we're going to play the big boys. We're going into the whack, and we want to be like them one day. 
Well, they're saying, well, hey, this ain't so bad. We're as good as they are right now. They've gotten their confidence up. And what the Rams are going to have to do now is come back out here and say, no, we've, we've played with you for a while. We will establish superiority. We are the better team, the better conference. They're playing like an excited football team, Eastern Michigan. Their lone flying trip of the year, they usually bus in the, in the uh, Mid-American Conference. It's the only time they fly to a ball game. 21-18, right now they're flying over Colorado State. All right, thank you very much, Jerome, with Jim Harkema, Eastern Michigan head coach. You have to feel good about this offense. Never scored 21 points in the first half before. Well, we felt our offense is pretty darn good, and we haven't been very consistent. If we just don't turn the ball over those last two times, we would have moved the ball even better. So I think we were we came here to try to build a championship football team for our conference. If we could stop making the mistakes on offense, I think we're, we're going to come out of that with that. And if we could come out with a victory on top, that would be great. You're going to keep running Perry Foster as much? Well, you bet. He's pretty good. We better give him the ball, wouldn't you think? I think so. Oh, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Simple strategy. I should be a coach. Back up to you, Drew. You wonder what Earl Bruce halftime. Tom, you've been in a lot of locker rooms at intermission on the plus side and the downside. What do you think we said? Well, there's some coaches who you don't fear at all when you go in, no matter how bad the beating uh, in the first half. But Earl Bruce is not one of those coaches. I imagine he went in there and he really chewed them out. And the assistant coaches also, I think that they were really heated out there because the Rams have really made a lot of mistakes in this ball game. And there's a lot on the line. And I think Earl Bruce was a uh, vintage Earl Bruce in that locker room. He was chewing everything and everybody up and down. Earl Bruce spent last year at Northern Iowa, where, <clears throat> excuse me, where he went five and six. Graduated from Ohio State in 53. In nine years at the helm of the Buckeyes, 81 and 26, two Big Ten titles outright in 79 and 84. He had two ties for the title, 81 and 86. Lost both of his Rose Bowls, both to Southern California in close football games, 17, 16, and 79, and 20, 17, and 84. But really one of the finest coaches in the land. And this is, as you mentioned, such a big game for them momentum-wise. They would go to 2-2, two and two and they start the WAC season next week against a, a fine Air Force team. This is one that they have to get at home. Well, they, they have to, you know, from a, a spirit, you know, just to get the spirit of the team going. You win this ball game, and, and though you're not looking down the road to Air Force, you can't but help know and hear their footsteps coming. And if you don't have a good performance against Eastern Michigan, and you have one of the most potent offenses in the country coming in here, it's going to be hard to go up here and get you guys up for next week. Be another lesson in whack offensive football next week. For Earl Bruce, Eastern Michigan, they want to improve to 4-0. They have Western Michigan next week. CSU kicks it deep. John Stoitziatis from a yard deep. And he crashes out across the 20 to 22. Macronado and Andy Byrne down on special teams. Nice little hit. There's a flag down. We might get a clip, uh, clipping call coming in here. And if so, that uh, would really put the Hurons uh, in trouble uh, to start the third quarter. Wasn't a clip, but a hold. And they will walk off 10 yards. And they'll start at the 14-yard line. Actually, they walk off half the distance. Actually, not half the distance. Pardon me, at least 10 yards. To the 14-yard line. That's where Eastern Michigan will start with it. Tom Sullivan is the quarterback. Fifth-year senior from Jackson, Michigan. Hector Murillo and Perry Foster are the backs. Right now they're in a single setback position. Foster. Ahead for a few. Lance on A. Got over there defensively for the Rams. Up front it's Eric Toe, Mike Rowe, Gordy Johnstone, Mark McHugh, and Kurt Davis. On the offensive line for Eastern Michigan, the tight end is Rob Fogarty. As Earl Bruce walks the sideline, his defensive troops in a 3-4, Sharico, 
Shaler and Hanks. Linebackers Gans, Ane Thompson and Rule secondary. Carolyn Jones at the corners, Druseld and Wilson at the safeties. Inside give bottled up by Sharico. Murillo, not much doing. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that was all. We'll set up a third down and four. Good penetration that time by Shaler and uh, Sharico, really getting down under their blocks and coming up and taking a 240 pound pullback and just holding him to zilch. A good shot of Perry Foster. Sophomore from Kentwood, Michigan. And Rabbits Catholic Central High School. Brother Bobby played here for a while. To the outside, first down yardage. Tim Kellogg. Junior from Coldwater, Michigan with the reception. Just a little three-step drop. Uh, must have caught him in a zone and they're moving out. The corners are moving out too quick to have your linebacker getting over there before your cornerbacks do. They will have to make that adjustment or Tom Sullivan will take that all day. First and 10, ball at the 27-yard line. Maria is the fullback, Foster the tailback. Bennett in motion. Foster into the secondary, brought down from behind after a good game. Selwyn Jones had to make the tackle. Foster Gallup for more. Rob Fogarty, his tight end, got a good block. 18 yards on the advance. Good surge by the offensive line. Here we see a fullback going down on Tipicani. Got him off of his feet. Gets a big crease there. The support from the safety was to come from the outside in. And that time he was from the outside and just stayed outside and didn't close up that gap for uh, Perry Foster. Rio in the ace formation, slot to the top. Down the middle for his tight end. Great reception by Fogarty. Little rush up front. Throws off of his back foot, moving away over the head of the linebacker there. Boy, good concentration. Safety falls down, or he never would have completed that pass. Great catch, great concentration. Tippeconic was the linebacker in coverage. He could never find the football. First and 10 at the Rams, 30. Initial possession, second half for Eastern Michigan. They lead it 21-18. Yeah, Very, yeah. Might have taken too much time. The 25-second clock had expired. Illegal procedure. Old five yard walk off, so it'll be first and 15. Colorado State wanted to establish themselves defensively. EMU only had to pump the football one time in the first half. And so far, you know, they've taken and what they've gone on. Another, they've picked up 60 foot yards just about here. You have Mitch Brown in the backfield now. Looks like he's the uh, tailback. 6'1", 212-pound sophomore. And it's Brown whose number is called. And he gets the five yards back. They just lost by penalty. Paul Hanks got a hold of his jersey and brought him down. You can tell when a team starts getting confident. Right before the last play when the penalty was called, they had just got the start of that play off though they didn't really get the chance to get in the motion. Now, if I'm a linebacker, I sit back and say, well, they were going to come with just a straight handoff uh, to their tailback. And then, guess what? They come back with the same play. So they're very confident about themselves right now. Foster back in the ball game. He has the football. Tippeconic nails him after a couple. It'll bring up a third and eight. Eric Shaler also from his nose tackle position. You know, it's always important to come out at the start of the third quarter, start of the second half, and get yourself established offensively or defensively. Right now, the offense, they're moving down with little effort at all, moving right down against a defense that, you know, has really been the strength of this ball club. Third and eight, ball at the 28-yard line of Colorado State. Big down for both teams. Here comes the blitz, and here comes an audible right now. Sullivan down the middle to the five and brought down right there. Dan Bennett on the little slanted. Beautiful read. Sullivan hasn't missed a beat yet checking off. He hasn't. 
Hasn't done it at all. He's just checked this thing off. Again, get out there to the strong side. Kept their tight end in. Bring the flanker down on the post pattern. They're just stymied. The entire uh, defensive secondary, they're confused out there as to what's going on. Double tight end situation. Fogarty and Walsh both in the game as they go out of the wishbone. Mario the up back. Brown and Foster the tails. This is Foster, not much. Maybe got to the four. Lance Sané, the first green jersey in there. Perry Foster lost his hat. Tell you what, you don't like that as a defensive uh, team also. They've just run down the, down the field on you. They've run the ball down your throat. And then their tailback is helping up your defensive lineman. That is not a good sign. <laughs> you would never have uh, taken that. Would you tell oh, no, I don't need any help. Second and goal. This time it's Brown. And he's hit hard. Craig Purcell, strong safety. 5'10", 180 pounder from Alamo, California. Good surge here by the defense, the right side. Now there you go, he's underneath. They got underneath the offensive lineman that time. Allow, Tercel, allow your linebackers to come in. Feel from the top. Great play by the defense. So third and goal at the four. The drive has already consumed five and a half minutes in the third quarter. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. Rob Fogarty. And Eastern Michigan goes up 27-18. We're going to come right into your living room on this one. And what happened on this, the safety northern linebacker got a bump on Fogarty. Here he comes right there, wrapped up, offline, sealed, and delivered. Touchdown. Senior from Chagrin Falls, Ohio. On a goal, in a goal line situation, you cannot allow a tight end to come free, unmolested, if you will, off of that line. He's going to never win in a situation like that. Lope will kick it deep to either Sean Willis or Tony Carr. Willis from the four. And the senior gets it out to about the 23-yard line. Steve Alvarez, how you doing? All right, Drew, I just spoke with Tom Sullivan. He's on the bench getting some ice on his lower back. That's the only thing that really isn't going perfectly for him so far today. I asked him if he was checking off a lot at the line of the scrimmage. He said he, indeed he was. He says he feels very comfortable this afternoon making the audibles, and that he expects to continue to do so. He says he's seeing the field great, and everything is going their way, and that was uh, picture, perfect, picture perfectly illustrated on the last drive. Drew? Yes, it was. Jimenez to Willis, first down to the 36-yard line. Jerry Smith made the tackle on Willis. Interesting that Earl Bruce comes out throwing the football. Do you believe he needs to do that? Still plenty of time to go in this football game. 8.52 to go in the third quarter. It's a running football team primarily. Is that a confidence builder perhaps for Jimenez? Well, I'm sure it is, but also... Uh, You've just gone behind another touchdown even before your offense handed the ball off. Tony Alford pushing tacklers ahead. Five, six more yards, another first down. Bob Navarro was probably more aptly put. He was tackled on the play. <laughs> yeah, he was. Mac Renata going to lead it out there, get Adam out there. Whitmer, good block, seal block there. Oh, as a strong safety, you don't like to see that. the 48-yard line of CSU. Alfred averaging 5.8 to carry this year, 6.8 today. And he gets the call again and doesn't get much. Maybe half a yard. Herman Bain inside. Don Shell English also. You know, There's Don Shell English. He's going to come off the field, wounded a bit. There's Todd Yurt coming back on. Oh, Peter's Mark coming back in the ball game. They average more, rush, more rushes than passes. Not too many WAC teams outside of the Air Force Academy and Fisher DeBerry do that. Most teams in the WAC put it up. High 
throw, trying to get it to Greg Scott, his tight end, who was well covered on the play. And now we have flags coming in in the direction of a personal foul. Some extracurricular stuff after the play. You know, one of the things that's happening with uh, Jimenez is that he seems to be a one receiver type quarterback where he has not learned yet to look for that secondary uh, receiver. Going up the sidelines was Tony Carr all along. The safety had already bit up and it was a touchdown. He's not able to pick out the open guy. There's Jim Harkema. When he took over the Eastern Michigan program seven years ago, they had won two football games in the previous three years. Just a few years after that, they went to the California Bowl. They're now the winningest program in the MAC over the last three years. Bowman in motion after the 15-yard walk-off. And Jimenez in trouble from behind, scrambles free, and will pick up some positive yardage to the 32 of the Hurons. Werner Blakely and Mike Danley got him out of bounds. That was a rare blitz uh, by the Hurons that time. They brought, they brought their entire front seven, but they lost containment. And Jimenez is a running quarterback, and they need to know that if they don't already, that he can beat you on the run, that he doesn't mind doing it so much. Greg Primus in the ball game for CSU, redshirt freshman from GW in Denver. Rodney Bowman to the right. Yurt, the fullback, gets a couple. Sean Shota, Brendan Flaherty, the inside linebacker. There's Yurt. He had four touchdowns last week against Cal State Fullerton, and the second time in his career he has done that. He did that two years ago out in Hawaii. The ball game we did. 39-38 affair. A lot of people scored that evening. Yeah, I tell you what, even uh, you and I thought we were going to get to carry the ball. John hobbles off there. Uh, looked like he had the ankle twisted up a bit. Uh, there's Adam Whitmer. Slow to come off the field. You don't, you don't like to see a team losing two starters on one play. Pat Morris will fill in for Whitmer. Whitmer is sophomore, 6'3", 245 from North Glen High School suburb of Denver. Pat Morris comes in. He's 6'1", 235, a senior from Torrance, California. Grew up in the same neighborhood as Hector Murillo for Eastern Michigan. They're good buddies. Third down and two for Colorado State. They trail by 10. Mac Granato and Alfred, the split backs. Got a man, Willis, touchdown. Sweet throw by Mike Jimenez. Willis beat Werner Blakely, and the Rams closed within four. You know, that's a great throw. I think the throw might be greater than the call. You get weak side action that time. What that does is freeze up that car. It holds the free safety. You see him right there. It, it throws him just for a moment. He's late coming in there. It took a great throw to get that ball in there. Great play. Second touchdown on the year for the senior from Cerritos, California. Had a 55-yard catch for pay dirt against Colorado. Brown turns on the extra point. It's 28-25, but hold everything because there is the yellow handkerchief on the field. CSU is walking off as if it is against Eastern Michigan. short to Sean Willis. You know, there was a lot that made this play successful. First of all, the Rams line up in a, uh, a set that they had never lined up before in this entire game. Split backfield, and then they give a weak action play action. They get play action to the weak side, where it freezes the outside linebacker, it freezes the weak safety, it allows Goldman to come in there and run that post play, and then it took a perfect uh, throw, which Jimenez put the ball in on the target. Jimenez now 10 of 17, 142 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions, two crucial interceptions. Both of those coming in the first half. Sure looked very confident on that throw. Peter Rantz 
touchdown. Kicking it deep, and he really got his foot into this one. Eight yards deep, Paul Powell will down it there. So Eastern Michigan. There's Jim Harkema. He does a lot of pacing. Pretty avid tennis player is Harkema. One of the three sports that he took in in college. A good basketball player and football player. Went to Kalamazoo college graduated in 1964. Tom Sullivan, he's been special today. 10 of 13, 171 yards, three touchdowns, and a lone interception. Bennett comes in motion, and Perry Foster with his 19th carry of the day picks up seven, eight yards. Foster nearing that century mark. He'll have about 93 after that carry. Boy, that's great. You know that something good is happening up front when a tailback can take the ball as deep as Foster did and get into full stride very quickly and not break stride until he uh, makes contact with someone. The, the, the job is being done up front for the Hurons. Harlan Carroll is out of the ball game at left corner. Senior Kevin Nettles is now in for Colorado State. This play's bottled up before it got going. Tip Connick, junior from Albuquerque. First person there, number 89. There was some early movement that time. Uh, looks like by the tailback, they were able to get away, uh, away with it. Uh, Foster moved a bit early. Third down and about two and a half yards to go. And this is where Tom Sullivan and Eastern Michigan have been so successful today. Converted. Only had to punt one time. Lone setback is Foster. He's checking off again. He's going for the same play. Down the middle, and this time defended a little bit better. Bennett couldn't come up with it. It was a little behind him. And the Rams celebrate. And they're able to hold Eastern Michigan. Exact same thing. Come up to the line, check it off, get it right over the middle. He got into that dead zone there, but he wasn't able to hold on to the ball. A little bit behind him. De and decent coverage by the guy we just talked about coming into the ballgame, senior Kevin Nettles. He also knew he was going to get popped. Hennigan will punt. Rodney Bowman is back in single safety at his own 40. Nearly blocked. And maybe it partially was. The 38. This is something that the Rams said they would do. They've had trouble on their punting game Eastern Michigan all season long. They had a high snap a week ago. And both times they've gone back to punt, Colorado State has sent people after them. This wasn't partially blocked. It wasn't a good effort. Only 34 yards for Hennigan. Let's look and see. Nobody got it. Hennigan did a pretty good acting job. Well, not only that, but I think the Rams did a superb job in avoiding the punter that time. You get the hanky if you hit him. First and 10 at Eastern Michigan's 38. And here is Jimenez off the bootleg to the 32-yard line. Charles Gordon pulled him down there. You know, uh, I think that was an option that went awry. That went the wrong way. And Jimenez took off to the weak side, and he saw Charles Gordon coming up. And he must remember reading in, he remembered reading in the programs early right before the start of the game that Gordon goes about 160 pounds, so I'm going to give him a shoulder. Ooh, there you go. And Jimenez goes close to 200 pounds. He's a big guy, 6'3". I can beat that guy. He played some running back last year when the Rams had injuries late in the season. This is Tony Carr into the secondary, and we get a late flag as he gets the first down to the 25. Navarro came up from his free safety slot. I think that flag is going to go against... Uh, I think Lorita's going to get called here. He makes a great block coming around the corner, but he wraps his arms around. Looks like a takedown here. Here you go. He comes around the corner. We can't quite see it, but then the flag came in right when he made the uh, contact there. Good hit coming in. Tony uh, Alfred holding onto the ball well. Okay, let's see if we can see it. He comes around the corner. There you go. Got the block there. It's a takedown. He takes him down, and then the flag comes in right to the left of your screen. That looked pretty good to me. Unless he had his arm hooked up in there, and the official obviously can see a little bit better than us. There he goes. Takedown. We get the call from Guy Gibbs, referee from Arvada, Colorado. That's okay. It's a good call in WWF, but out here, you get penalized for it. 
<laughs> so the ball goes back to the 38-yard line, and it'll be second down and 10 for CSU. Willis goes to the top to the near side, Rodney Bowman. Jimenez will be tackled from behind a sack as he got to the 39-yard line. Brad Schmidt got him. He had plenty of time, just nobody open. Well, it seemed like as soon as he got back into the pocket, he started looking around and his feet were moving. He was kind of gingerly moving there on his feet like he was going to get hit. And then he's dropped there for a loss. And the senior from Mission Viejo, California, Schmidt, who made the tackle, seems banged up a little bit. That was the first sack of the day. Eastern Michigan was concerned about protecting Sullivan. They've done an outstanding job. Third and 10. To Alford, needs to get to the 28, and I believe he did. Great second effort again by the junior from Colorado Springs, Gordon and McClendon defensively for the Hurons. Safe play, good protection, a little bit of pressure coming up from the right side. I think he can feel it. He gets rid of the ball. Nice strike there. Alfred makes a good uh, catch, catching the ball with his hands. Takes a nice shot there by Gordon also, but he knew exactly where that first down marker was. All depends on the spot. As he's a very intense ball player, especially if he gets that ball in his hands. He's going to go out there, and he knows when, it, when there's going to be a con uh, contact made that he's not going to get the worst of it. He's going to deliver punishment as well as taking some. This is a guy who only had 55 yards rushing last year. Macronado slicing for a couple to the 25-yard line. Don Shell English and Fred McClendon. McClendon's had a pretty good game. Outside linebacker. Eastern Michigan uses a lot of people defensively. They'll play 22 or more. You sense that the Rams are setting up a play here. They've gone a few times with the fake dive in with the fullback, coming back weak side with the option there to the tailback. Let's see if it happens. Not on this play. This is Tony Alfred cutting back. Still going and ahead to the 15-yard line. Bounced off of three tacklers, and Don Shell English is on the ground on one knee. He's fine, but he's saying, how did I let him get away? Here's where you earn the attention and the respect of the opposition. Puts his shoulder down, keeps on Gordon going. Gordon has to take on a guard, which he does not like. It takes four players to take him down. Great run. And this is Earl Bruce type football. Run right at you. Right now he's successful. 2.10 to go third quarter. First and 10 at the 15. Macronado bouncing to the outside. Picks up two or three. Herman Bain, number 70. He'll get up last for Eastern Michigan. Senior's been active from Garden Grove, California. Another one of those junior college transfers that Harkema has gone and recruited. He's uh, from Golden West, JC. Pretty up, good program. Yeah, he'll up the average of your uh, defensive line rather quickly at 284 pounds. Second and seven, ball at the 12. Inside give, and this play goes nowhere. Red beautifully inside. Rodney Bowman bottled up. Derek Buford was right there. Redshirt freshman from Springfield, Ohio, number 43. Little misdirection. That was kind of a strange call. You have to set plays up like this. You have to, you know, be going on a sweep, giving a, a movement to get to the outside, and then come back slashing uh, with your wing back as he was at that time. Eastern Michigan saw it on film. They practiced against it yesterday. Third down, 11. Jimenez under some pressure. Now throwing late and out of bounds, and that was a wise move. Didn't have anybody open. And we will see Mike Brown to try to tie the ball game up. You know, of all the things that uh, Jimenez has done well today, that was probably the smartest thing that he's done. Don't put the ball up for an interception. Don't take the loss. Get rid of it. Keep your team in field goal position. Bruce wanted seven points, naturally. Brown will kick it from the near hash mark. It'll be a 32-yard attempt. Good snap. 
with megaphones. They've been using these things for over 100 years in college football. Why? I'll show you why. Because they work. Back up to you. I don't need a mic anymore. Hey, Steve, I think we saw your best side right there also. Thank you very much. The birthday boy. 28, 28, 44 seconds to go. Steve's having a ball down here, isn't he? He's in his element. Well, he looks like a college student now. He looks 24. That's how old he just turned. Yeah, I know it. He's been that for eight years, too. Looks like a co <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> Peter Ransau kicking it deep. John Stoitsianis from the five. Stoitsianis with a little bit of an opening. Gets it out close to the 30-yard line. That ball is loose down there, but uh, there's no signal that it's going to go the other way. Donovan Gans, the only true freshman to play for Colorado State this year, and Earl Bruce made the tackle. And he started at outside linebacker today. He had a big interception in the first half. 6'2", 225 from Orange, Texas. Tom Sullivan. Looking way downfield and nearly intercepted by Selwyn Jones. Trying to get it to John Pfeiffer. You know, rolling out to your left is not a, an easy proposition for a quarterback. When he gets out there, he throws the ball with a lot of force, but this time he overthrows his intended receiver. Selma Jones, who has not really been picked on today, almost comes up with the interception. So it's second down and 10, ball at the 30-yard line. Tied at 28. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, Steve Alvarez from Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. This is Mitch Brown. Ooh, and he was kissed right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Mitch Brown has no idea where he wants to go. And then there goes the lead blocker who he should have been following. He could have gotten more idea. And then he allows that uh, Tippeconic to come down and put the helmet right there under his chin. And he's checking off once again. He sees man coverage down here at the lower part of the screen. Picked off. Selwyn Jones with it, and he'll get corralled at the 14-yard line by Patrick Walsh, but a big play defensively by the sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. And he's still on the ground. Well, he got what you call, he got what you call a yanked. He got yanked down to the ground. Here's exactly what happens. You have the blitz coming in, but they don't go to man. They drop back into zone. Drops right back there into that safety, that dead zone. That time, they fooled Sullivan. He went to the well. One time too many. They gave him a false look. He's able to pick it off. That was the quick post that they were successful on two other times today. But this time, they put him right there into the, uh, to the flat. They're playing free safety, and he comes up with the ball. Second pick on the year for Jones. Highly recruited out of Missouri City. Top 100 players in Texas, according to one newspaper when he came out a couple of years ago. Had a big year last season. First and 10 for the Rams at the 14 of the Hurons. Full house backfield, Macronado on the sweep. And he does well to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Don Shell English strung it out there. That's a play that they want Macronado to turn it up. He's not a speed guy that he's going to be able to get wide and turn the corner. Well, uh, I don't know if they want him so much to turn him up as to maybe they shouldn't have given him the ball on that particular play if they want to go wide. You put that into the uh, hands of one of your fleet to receivers uh, because you string it out, you're going to allow that pursuit to come in there as it did, and he doesn't have the speed to turn it up. Go back to the eye, Alfred, and the tailback, Macronado the up back. Jimenez to the outside. Scott is tight end. Rambles close to a first down inside the five to the four and a half. Jerry Smith got him there. Great call down this close. You want to freeze your linebackers just for a moment. 
and here's exactly what you do. You've frozen your linebackers, get your tight end crossing, get him underneath. The corner has already been run off by your flanker. Here it is. Put him out there one-on-one -on -one with the safeties. Good call. Scott has a couple of touchdowns on the year. One last week. Third and short, and Yurt has it. It'll be first and goal at the three for Colorado State. We were talking in the break, Tom, with right after halftime that we felt that a turnover probably would be the key to winning this football game. And we're far from over, even if CSU punches it in here, 14.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Exactly. That was your call. You decided it was going to be a turnover. And, uh, you know, here we are. Now, they have to take advantage of being down this close. The last time, a couple of times, they've been in the full house. They haven't had much success. Let's see what happens here. This is Macronado on the sweep, and he gets maybe a yard to the two. And I have to believe I want Tony Alford with the football if I'm a Colorado State fan here. Yeah, absolutely. And and also, or what you want to do is you want to go back to what you did back in the third or third quarter or second quarter is you want to split them out. Come out of the full house, open up their defense, open up your offense. The most of your success has come when you've gone one-on-one, -on -one, not allow them to create a pile up there in, in, uh, in the, on the offensive line. They go full house again. Play action, easy touchdown for Tony Alford. And he did keep one foot in bounds. Touchdown, Colorado State. <laughs> Tony Alford's third score of the year, second on the day. You go three or four times in here with the full house, the fake in there, let them get their confidence up. They can do it, but then you come out with the play action pass. You slip him right by your linebacker there. Uh, Tom Schooler, touchdown. Here's Mike Brown. He's been perfect this afternoon. Collins, Colorado. CSU leading now by seven. They keep coming from behind. It was. 21-18 at intermission, Eastern Michigan. They went down the field and scored a touchdown, a lead by 10. And CSU has come storming back as they did in the first half when they were down 14 to nothing. Plenty of time on the clock in the fourth quarter, 13-47. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, Steve Alvarez. And Rants out. High end over end. Paul Powell from his nine. He's got an opening to the outside. And works his way to the 29. That opened up and closed up pretty quickly. Let's pick up that score one more time. Jimenez getting it to Alfred. Two times they gave the ball to Yurt right here. This time he pulls it back, keeps it, finds Tony Alfred all alone in the corner there. Tony did a good job uh, keeping his feet and keeping him in bounds. Five plays, 14 yards after the Selwyn Jones interception. Jimenez gets it to Alfred. Second scoring throw for Jimenez today. Harry Foster, Hector Murillo in the eye formation. And just a couple for Foster, bottled up about the 37-yard line. Tony Alford's having himself a pretty good afternoon. 12 carries, 79 yards, two receptions, 13 yards, a touchdown rushing, a touchdown receiving. Perry Foster's done pretty well also. He also had, had a good game, obviously, is uh, Tom Sullivan who uh, now, you know, the ball's in his court to move his offense down the field, maintain his poise, not get rattled, and uh, put some points on the board. He's under pressure, sets up the screen to the 39-yard line. Hector Murillo is fullback, and now we have a flag down in the backfield, and was it a late hit by Paul Hanks? It looks like Paul... Uh, Yes, yeah, they're congratulating him like he had a late hit. It did look like one. There it is. That's an easy way to get 15 yards. Painless way to get 15 yards, unless you're Tom Sullivan. He had to receive the blow. <laughs> That's what you call sacrificing your body for the good of the team. And this is not quite as you know, damaging as a turnover naturally, but this is a mistake that Earl Bruce 
wants his club to eliminate. You want to be, you have to be disciplined when you're playing close football games as Colorado State has over the last several years. You know, and, Unfortunately, they've been losing them because of mistakes yeah. similar to that. And yet it's hard to be aggressive and disciplined. Those two are almost at the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, but you can get burned if you're not. John Pfeiffer to the near side. Bennett to the top. Sullivan down the field, complete to the 25-yard line. John Pfeiffer sitting there all alone on his knees in the zone. And here comes Eastern Michigan right back. Pickup of 21. Yeah, this is a great throw. Uh, he has to uh, get away from uh, uh, Hanks right here. He squares up, throws the ball across the zone, right into the dead part of the zone. That's a great catch and a great throw. Sullivan, not known for not known for his scrambling ability, did a good job avoiding pressure and picking up a couple of more seconds in time. Foster, Andy Byrne closed down quickly. Eric Shaler also there. Let's go down to Steve Alvarez. Steve. Thank you, Drew. I talked to Eric Tipiconic just a moment ago about that last series where he got to the quarterback and forced the interception. He said it was a simple blitz call. He shot the gap, and because of that, nobody touched him. Had a clean shot on the quarterback. Also had a conversation with Tony Alford, who's uh, having another strong day for CSU. I said, you're closing in on a 100-yard mark. I said, I'd like to get 114 to keep the average at 100. But we'll take the 35-28 lead right now. Back up to you. I'm sure he will. Thanks, Steve. This is Foster, big opening into the secondary and to the 14-yard line, excuse me, the 16-yard line, where he'll be a couple of yards short of a first down. Simple little delay play, and Foster, with his gliding ability, making it pay dividends. You know, up front on the offensive line, one of the things that you think in football is you got to knock someone on their back all the time. Not so. A lot of times, all you have to do is you get someone tied up just to immobilize him for a second and allow your back, and if he's a good back like uh, Foster, he's gonna get through as he did just then. Third and a yard. Foster. I don't think so. He didn't get close. He needed to get over the 15-yard line. I believe he was short. Tipiconic led the charge. And already the field goal unit on the field for Eastern Michigan. Double tight end. The defensive line gets under their blockers. They're able to hold them off to a stalemate there. Always allow, allows a linebacker to come in there and finish up. As you see, Ane on the top right there. Where they marked it, it looks like he even might have lost a couple of feet. Hennigan in the ball game. This will be a 33-yarder pretty much straight on. And it's wide to the left. And Colorado State holds. EMU comes away with nothing after an impressive drive. Score remains 35-28. Well, Bruce wants to put the fans back in the stands. And if you play exciting football, that will happen. Tell you what else is going to happen. They're not going to get too many volunteers down there for the push-up duty. And it used to be that uh, guys would line up, say, I'll do push-ups because they knew there wasn't going to be a lot of scoring. Well, if you have to do push-ups every time they score, right about now you've done over 100 push-ups, <laughs> and you're in trouble. The Rams from their own 20. To the outside, Rodney Bowman. And he's hammered down after about four yards. Let's go back down to Steve Alvarez. Thank you very much, Drew. Underneath the Colorado State bench, intermixed with some of the football helmets, are some other helmets from the local sheriff's department. I don't know what would be funnier if one of the policemen put on one of these things or if one of the players put on one of these. They do have a nice face shield, by the way, so you'd probably be safe in one of these. Could you, you want? Could you, you, you could you model one for us? Uh, do I have? All right, hold. Beautiful. That's now, if they only had a tinted windshield. That's you, baby. Well, thank you very much. Back to you, Saw Knight. Jimenez scrambling and makes something positive happen. He gets it to Greg Scott. He was in trouble. Herman Bain got him out. It'll be third down about a yard after that reception. Herman Bain flushed him out of the pocket. He rolled to his right. Uh, 
completed the pass there. Bain is saying, hey, look, guys, if I flush him, somebody has to be able to pull the trigger. Somebody has to come in for the kill. No one there that time. Third down in a yard for Earl Bruce's squad. And getting the first down ever so narrowly was Macronado. Looked like Jimenez had to reach that time, Drew, to get the ball uh, into the cup there. He just did get it to him. Todd Yurt will replace Paul Macronado and they'll move the chains. 9.35 to go. CSU by a touchdown. Alford losing the football, and Eastern Michigan has it. Mike Danley comes up with it, and another big turnover. You know, here's one of the few times that Tony Alford doesn't put his shoulders down, but he's running kind of straight up, tried to get behind Yurt there for, uh, you know, to get it, pick up a blocker. That time the ball comes right on the helmet there. It comes out. Herman Bain got the recovery. Mike Danley with Mike, the big hit. Mike Danley, 6'3", 220 pounds, put the helmet right on the ball. Out it comes. They start the other way on the 30. From Papillon, Nebraska. Bennett in motion. Inside give Murillo and Murillo to the 22-yard line before Burns stopped him. You know, I was talking with uh, a couple of the uh, EMU coaches down uh, on the field before the start of the game, and they said, if you ever get into Los Angeles, stop down at a little restaurant by the airport called Hector's Place. That's Murillo's dad's Mexican food place down there, and they say it's dynamite. And based on what he did to me last night, I have three free passes. <laughs> okay. I won't ask you what he did to you. <laughs> Second and down, two yards to go. Keep it on the ground. Foster bouncing to the outside, and he'll have a first down. To the 19, Kevin Nettles came up, and here we go. Another late flag as tempers flare. See way, which way this one goes. CSU got walked off for an unsportsmanlike conduct a few moments ago. It's the first down. That was probably a dead ball foul, so let's see what they're going to do here. Tom Sullivan saying it's against Colorado State. Let's see if he has some inside information. Personal foul. Personal foul against Colorado State. That'll be half the distance to the goal line. And you know Earl Bruce is again fired up. It's tough enough to stop Eastern Michigan. What, what in the world does a coach like Earl Bruce think? He's playing a team that's in a division that is supposedly not as strong as theirs. And here, you know, he's in a tough ball game. Not decided with eight minutes to go in the ball game. Do you think he's thinking that uh, his reputation as a coach is going to be questioned here in the event of a defeat? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, certainly this is his first year here at Colorado State. These are not at everybody. He is not recruited. This is his first recruiting class, and none of those guys are on the field. Inside give Foster. Tip Peconic bottles him up, but Foster rolls inside the five. good demonstration of what it is to run the football by Foster and Alfred today. Unfortunately, all that Alfred has done has been marred by that fumble, but he's had a pretty good afternoon. Inside of eight minutes to go. Eastern Michigan trying to get even. Toss sweep. Perry Foster with some room to the outside. Now it closes down. He does a great job of getting inside of tacklers. It looked like he would lose a couple, and he gains three. And it was very, very close to being a clip. Uh, there's no flags on the ground, but watch as Mitch Brown goes up to lead here. Right here, let's see if he's the one that's going to clip. Yeah, oh, man. That's a clip all day, Drew. Sharika and Giselle brought him down. Third and goal, ball at the one. Murillo, touchdown.
We're within a point of being all knotted up again. Do you go for the Do you go for the win if you're Harkonnen? Too much time left the way these two teams are going up and down the field. You have to get even first. <laughs> Tim Hannigan is in the game. Yeah, we talked about Mario. He just got the touchdown there. Uh, he was my next door neighbor, and he didn't know that I was a next door neighbor. But he started pounding on my door last night about a quarter to ten, and I didn't know what was going on. And so I finally I went over to answer the door, and he realized it was me, and his mouth went open. And the first thing he did, he said it was my roommate. I didn't have anything to do with this, sir. <laughs> and he called me, sir. I had nothing to do with this, sir. <laughs> so what would college education will do for you? First time they were into the wishbone in this series. They go wide on the pitch to uh, Mitch, Mitch Brown. Here they come right back and uh, give it to the big man over the top. Got a good surge from the offensive line. They tied this Hummer up with 7.09 to go. They go 30 yards after the fumble by Tony Alford. in and out of the end zone. Jimenez running the option keeps for a couple. I still believe at this point another turnover would play a factor. They put it on the ground. Both teams quite a bit are on the ground or throwing picks. You hate to say that, but the way this whole thing is transformed and unfolded, you believe maybe there's one more turnover. Well, you certainly can't discount that possibility that there's another one left in either one of these ball teams. But right now, I think they're going to Either team who has the ball, in this case the Rams, are going to have to establish themselves in that front line, run out the clock, get in scoring position. Play action. Jimenez swings it out to Alford. And Alford brought down after a short gain. It'll set up third down and four. He picked up three on the reception. Don Shell English made the tackle. A little swing pass to Alford. Anytime you want to get a, a swift back out like that, you want to get that ball to him quickly with at least one lineman out there in front blocking for him. That time the play developed too slow. It allowed the defense to get in pursuit, take him down for a little game. Here's a big play as we're inside six minutes. Third down and four yards to go. Jimenez, first down. Went to Tony Alford again. Dean Nesson brought him down, but the pickup of five and the move to sticks. Play action pass. If you're in a man, this will put you on a linebacker, which you see the linebacker coming out there. There's no contest. Just make the throw. Get it there. Completion first down. That time it was the middle linebacker, Brendan uh, Flaherty, who's had a pretty good ball game in the middle, but in a play action situation like that, he's at a disadvantage. Alford. Still going, Tony Alford across the 40-yard line to the 39, and he's over 100 once again. Charles Gordon brought him down there, and Alford keeps bouncing off of Eastern Michigan tacklers. Pick up 29. Your I'm coach sorry, will Tony. always tell you, we, we, we see uh, Flaherty coming off, never give up. The defense stops right now. They think he's down. We see number 91 there. He stops. Hey, you got to keep going. It's not over until the referee blows the whistle. 107 yards on just 14 trips. Macronato to the outside. And he runs hard through a couple of people to the 34-yard line. Bass and Sean Shoda finally stopped number 42. Junior running back from San Diego. You can't think about backing into this thing. We gotta go take it to them. And if they're talking shit, I want nobody talking. If they hit you, I want nobody swinging back. Does everybody understand? Back. To fire it up, Steve Sabo. Tony Carr met hard and dropped right about the line of scrimmage. Bob Navarro hit him a good lick, and also Brad Schmidt. You know, Sable brought up a good point to his defense out there. If you get back on the field, and more than likely you will, don't get intimidated by the opposition. If they're talking stuff, which he said, if they're talking stuff, you don't respond to that. You keep your composure out there. No more 15-yard penalties. And right now, it's the Rams' response. Hold on to the ball, a third and five. See if you can't pick up that first down. I didn't realize it was stuff that he said. 
Jimenez, great catch by Greg Scott, one-handed for a first down at the 29. Navarro with the tight coverage. Did you say Greg Scott or Great Scott? I tell you what, Great Scott, this is a tremendous one-hand catch, brings it back into his body, a disregard to the possibility of getting the ribs hit. He brings it in, first down, great catch. Not bad for a guy who walked on a few years ago as a punter and was cut and then asked the coaching staff if he could then try out at tight end. He's now starting. Tony Carr met at the line of scrimmage and maybe loses a yard. And Tony Alford getting ready to check back into the ball game. Three forty-four to go. Uh, I tell you, oh, you think this is a non-contact sport? Is it easy? Whoever said that? Guys losing a little bit of blood there, you know. That's Steve Rule, Inglewood, Colorado. Junior who started the last couple of years at outside linebacker. Second down and eleven. Jimenez to Scott. He threw it behind him. Scott adjusted and made the catch at the 21. Shy of a first down. Dean Nesson stopped him there. Good adjustment. Get between the linebackers as he did that time. Ball was a little bit uh, wide of him, but he reached out. You know, a lot of times that can be very dangerous because a player will try to reach out and make the catch, and he'll deflect the ball uh, into the hands of a defender. Holding on to it was a good job. 246, 245 to go, fourth quarter. Drew Goodman, Tom Graham, Steve Alvarez, third and a couple. Alford, bouncing, spinning, won't come close. And the Rams will have to attempt a field goal. Tom Schooler got great penetration and made the tackle in the backfield. Brown has been perfect so far today, two of two from 28 yards and also 32 yards. This one will be a little bit longer. You know, as we look at 41 yards. Excuse me, Drew. As we look at Stuhler, he's only 6'1", 211 pounds, and yet he's their leading tackler. And for a guy to get under for Brown is that he is straight on, not an angle at all. He's in the middle of the field. And he hooks it to the left. No good. So we are still tied at 35. And with a minute 59 to go, Tom Sullivan will work his two-minute drill. So Brown had been perfect until that point. Both kickers, uh, you're missing. Defensively, that gives you a boost. Offensively, you say, wow, what do I have to do? It really has a tendency to just take the emotions down, and if you have to get right back there on the field, you got to suck it up and go after it again. Kellogg in the slot inside of Dan Bennett to the top of your screen. Single setback is Perry Foster. Here's a delay, and just a couple of yards for Foster. Shaler came down hard. You know, I think that's a great call for uh, Eastern Michigan. You have a lot of time. There's a minute and 45 on the clock. Uh, you line up in a passing formation, but give it to Foster. He can break it. You know, they're not panicking. They send backers and nearly picked off and then nearly caught. Paul Hanks dropping off, had his hand on it, and then Patrick Walsh also got a glove on it. But finally, the ball fell to the ground. So it's now third and seven with 1.33 to go. He did a good job to get his hands on that ball and, and actually deflect it, keep it out of the, the offender's hand. But you know, sometimes when you go through a game like this, they'll tell the uh, defensive line or the linebacker, you have to have more ball drills. Learn to catch the ball. Get familiar with it. And Hanks is used to coming out of a three-point stance. Better call a timeout. Sullivan gets Pfeiffer in motion, flags down, and now Foster is down. And let's see if the play was whistled dead before it got going. Might very well have. Illegal motion. So the offense will stay on the field. The play was actually whistled dead. 
So it'll be third down and 12. Back there, he got off a wobbly 34-yarder last time, and they appear with 10 men up that they're going to go after it again. Here's the fake. Eastern Michigan runs the fake, and a first down for Eastern Michigan. Flag down. Flag down, however. Illegal. Uh, I think it's an, an illegal formation. It is against Eastern Michigan. You can tell by the hands on the helmets of the players in white. A holding. A hold. Oh, boy. That was a gutsy, gutsy call by Harkema because if he doesn't get it, you're already in field position if you're Colorado State. Well, a gutsy call it is, but why not? You've come this far. You're playing someone who you're not supposed to win, uh, beat. Let's go for the, all the marble. Let's just don't be satisfied with the tie. Let's go in here and try and win this ball game. And I, I think it's, you know, like you say, a gutsy call, but I don't think he had anything else to do. Go for the win. You know, you, if you tie or lose, well, everyone expected that. Hey, let's go in there and do what's not expected. Let's go in here and win this ball game. It's unfortunate that they would get a, a, a holding like that, and uh, I kind of hate to see the game being determined, you know, by a penalty. Well, it's not determined yet. There's still a minute 15 left. And now we have another timeout on the field to blocking it. See if they go after it again or if they check fake. It'd be very difficult for them to fake it here. They need to pick up 15 yards. Nearly a high snap, and it is a pretty good punt. Bowman back to his own 39. He dribbles it, and now he's turning it upfield and has a bit of a corner. And he runs out of bounds at the 33, but we have another flag down way back at the 22-yard line near where the ball was punted. And it'll all come back. Illegal procedure against Eastern Michigan. So that is a huge break for Colorado State. The ball was boomed out of there by Hennigan over the head of Bowman, who fumbled it, or muffed it, actually. By the time he got it and headed up field, he was run out of bounds at the 33-yard line. You don't oftentimes think about a punt being a clutch punt, but that time it was. That puts them, you know, that gives them 70 yards to go before they can even think about a score, you know, with the pressure on. They were coming. As a punter, you talk about turning the ball over, and that's when the ball is spiraling. Have the nose all of a sudden go downward, usually pick up five to seven extra yards on the carry. And that's exactly what Hennigan did, and he'll need to really boom it this time. You like to see that football almost stay like a... There's the five-yard walk-off. That's unfortunate. Guy Gibbs once again indicating the procedure call. And here we go again. Third attempt to try to punt it. We've had a fake. We've had a penalty. Let's see what Hennigan comes up with here with 108 to go. This time I think the Rams set up a return. Good effort again. Bowman from his own 46 loses the football. Falls on it at the 42. And the Rams will have to go 58 yards. And Rodney Bowman will have to deal with the wrath of Coach Earl Bruce. <laughs> Boy, there was a big sigh on that one. You know what else is interesting on that uh, particular exchange? What was it, uh, some 40 seconds was lost on the clock? It's 59 seconds, and there's another flag down that came in late. This at the 43-yard line. Let's see which way this one works. They're still talking this over. They're trying to move away from the players. And the players keep moving closer to them. Funny how uh, <laughs> well, you've done that before, haven't you? Oh, yeah. You you know, you're just attracted to the stripes there. As uh, we see Mike Danley, who's getting over there just to hear. Trying to influence the decision, perhaps? Certainly. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear from Guy Gibbs in a moment. He's picking up the flag. So whatever the infraction was, let's pretend it didn't happen. Colorado State with 59 seconds left with good field position, not as good as they might have had had Bowman fielded the ball cleanly. Their own 43. Tied at 35.
now they're talking it over again. And they better not look up here because I know in college football there is no instant replay. Let's take a look at it again. Wouldn't that be something? All of a sudden we get that type of authority. <laughs> they're down there. You know, what are they? Let's go down to Steve Alvarez. Steve, what do you make of this whole situation? Well, I've never seen three penalties in a row of fun like that before. Uh, the Rams do know whatever happens, they'll have the ball under a minute to go. And Mike Brown right now has finished warming up. He missed the 41-yarder that would have given him the lead. And what he has to do now, as I said before, is control his emotions. He has to think positive, think about the ones he made. He may get another opportunity. Block out the miss, you might get another shot at redemption. Drew? Jimenez to the outside to Alford, and Alford gets out of bounds after a pickup of eight. 49-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Tom Schooler ushered him out there, 52 seconds, so efficient use of the clock. Mike here? Brown right now, as Steve said, praying he gets another opportunity for redemption. Well, also, he's out there all alone because no one wants to get, get next to him. No one will stand near him. You know, it's kind of like it's something wrong with him right now. But the Rams are going to throw underneath, at least they did the last time. With the Hurons going, dropping back into their zone, find the guy underneath. There it is again. And a dropped football. Greg Scott couldn't hold on to that one. Had the one-handed grab earlier. Mike Danley in on the, the play there, defending. And this is a big play. It's third down. All of a sudden, it's third down. 47 seconds to go. Third down and a long two. They the Rams have one timeout left. They give up the middle, and Macronado has the first down. And the clock will stop in college because of that. Brendan Flaherty stopped him there. Macronado's been called on on several key down situations, and he's delivered on most of them. Jimenez probably called two plays in the half. Especially uh, with how they're throwing the ball right now. They're only wanting to pick up five or six yards a pop. Get it underneath the linebackers, underneath the safeties. Willis and Bowman to the near side. Willis drops it at the 40. Would have only been a pickup of a couple. And now it's third down and six. You played this long, it's down to 26 seconds and a down to go. What do you do? Right here, you have to pick up the first down because this field goal attempt would be 60 yards, and I don't think Mike Brown can get it there. They show blitz, and they come with it, and going deep, a jump ball, and it's incomplete. Now you have to go for it on fourth down. Werner Blakely, good coverage on Rodney Bowman. Not only that, but Rodney Bowman got away with the push. Boy, he certainly had a push there that time. I'm a little bit surprised at that. Bowman was not open, and you really need to get the first down. Well, desperation. He hasn't looked off all day to a secondary receiver. He throws the ball up there, expecting to catch the defense napping. We couldn't quite see where he had a push in there, but he got away with it. Fourth down and six. Jimenez throwing. Was it caught? Starts down. Incomplete. Ten seconds to go, and they'll turn it over on downs. Bowman couldn't hold on. And the Rams, with a golden opportunity, let it go awry. Ten seconds left, and we'll see if Tom Sullivan can pull a miracle. You know, the unfortunate thing about it, you're only ten seconds away from kissing your sister. That's what a tie is like. Throw all that blood and sweat out there. Sullivan sends two receivers to the near side, one flanked out to the top of your screen. Rams with six defensive backs in. Sullivan down the middle, incomplete. And there are three seconds left, intended for Fogarty. This will be the last play of the ball game. You know, a completion there, he holds onto that ball. They're in position for a field goal. That's exactly what you'd see. He holds on to it there. They have about a 48-yard attempt. You know, Fogarty's made some great catches, you know, during the, uh, in the course of this ball game today. That one was a catchable ball. Didn't hold on. 
Uh, Eastern Michigan calls a timeout, and they'll come over to the sideline and talk it over with Jim Harkema, who acts as his own offensive coordinator. You know, unless you can get a playoff and move 30 yards in two seconds and get the field goal unit on, this is the last play, and you know what's coming. Well, I don't know if that's what's going to come, because the last time they huddled up, they came up with something of a trick play. Uh, this time, will they just go for a Hail Mary? Well, you know what a Hail Mary is. You call it in the, uh, you, you call it in the huddle, you know, Hail Mary on three, ready, break. You know, but I think this is going to be something different. Look at this one. See if Fogarty should have come up with this ball. Oh boy, he should have caught that. Yeah. And that, look where he would have been. Inside the 30-yard line, a very makeable field goal attempt. You know, that would need him right in the basket. That's a great throw by Tom Sullivan. You know, he's been impressive, you know, with this touch on the ball. He's been very accurate. Been picked off twice, but is thrown for three touchdowns. Watch out for Foster down here. And watch out for the little hook and lateral. Here we go. Final play of the ball game. Sullivan throwing deep downfield. And Kevin Nettles picks it off in the end zone. He better run it out. That's their only chance. That's a safety. That's a safety. That's a safety. They won the ball game. Hold on a second. That's a safety. Let's see if no. They've not indicated anything yet. This is interesting. The official gets knocked down. DMU is down on the field. And we still haven't had a signal that the game is over or anything. The ball was intercepted, Drew. He could have gone down to a knee when he fought off the first tackler. He attempted to come up running and was tackled. That is a safety. That's what they're discussing right here. That would be the strangest conclusion to a game I've ever seen. That's right. He came up with the ball and started running. He's tackled. That's a safety. And I don't think so by looking at Jim Harkema that they're going to give it to him. You know, if you notice the Rams, they're not leaving the field and they're just holding their breath over there. They're down here making the contention that they tackle him in the end zone for a safety. G Guy Gibbs is still not showing any indication yet. Here, we're, we'll look at it again here. Ball game is over now. They have indicated that it will not be a safety. It ends in a 35-35 tie. Okay, he steps, even steps into the end zone when his forward momentum did not take him there. He tries to run out. Watch it here. He can stay down right there. He can stay down. Look at there. The ball even comes loose. Oh, my. His, his knee never touched. That was a fumble. That was a fumble. If his knee touched, the play is dead in college football right there. Let's see if the ball comes out before Kevin Nettles' knee touches the ground. He's falling right there. The ball is kicked out. The knee hasn't come out. That's a fumble, folks. You know, I was hollering. It wasn't safety. a safety. It was a touchdown. You know, I was hollering. It would have been a safety if he would have held the ball because he's still trying to run out of the end zone when all he has to do is touch his knee down. Also, his forward momentum did not take him to the end zone. He chose to run back into the end zone. He caught that ball on about the half yard line. He goes in on his own volition to the end zone. They can tackle him there for a safety if he doesn't fumble the ball. They got burned twice. Steve Alvarez, have you ever seen a conclusion like that? That is the wildest finish I've ever seen in a football game. You know, Earl Bruce, as that last play was unfolding, began to walk off the field. He was here at about the 20-yard line as his man was tackled in the end zone. And suddenly said, somebody said, hold on just a minute. Stood right here at the 20, waited for no call that came from the officials. Then he opted to go back on the field and shake hands with Jim Harkema. As they walked off the field, I imagine that's what they were talking about most of the way into the locker room. A wild finish, and I think the CSU players, from the looks on their faces as they left the field, feel like they got away with one. I was just going to ask you that. And evidently, they did feel they got away with one. It ends in a 35-35 tie. We'll come back and tell you all about it in a moment. I was always the quarterback's favorite target. I never dropped the ball because I had hands like glue. And even after football, I stick with my favorite beer, Miller Lite. I don't want some watered down version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. Oh, white. Honey, 
Thanks, Danny. Thank you, Dwight. Nice. There's no catch. When it's filler light, less filling tastes great. I'll never forget 1958, the first overtime championship game ever played in the NFL. United and the Colts, they beat the Giants 23-17. And the sporting news was there. Hey, you want overtime? How about that 1982 playoff game? The Chargers over the Dolphins, 41-38. The most exciting game I ever saw. And the sporting news was there. Yes, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, wherever the excitement is, the sporting news is there, bringing you more complete coverage than any other sports weekly. Call now for the sporting news at the lowest price anywhere with convenient delivery right to your door. Call 1-800-535-1700 and get 29 issues of the sporting news for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. You can't get a better deal. Call now 1-800-535-1700. That's 1-800-535-1700. It's Highland's Moonlight Madness Cuckoo Sale. Friday and Saturday only, Highland goes crazy with savings of 5 to 4. Michigan head coach Jim Harkema joins us. Your perception of that final play. Well, I thought the official had an extremely tough situation call because there's a lot of people around him. But it looked to me like one guy said that he ruled that he caught it in the in the field of play, ran in the end zone, and then they ran out and we tackled him in the end zone. So it's just a tough, tough call, and they had a lot of tough calls in the end of the game. And uh, if, if it's as wild and woolly as this in the whack, I don't want the heck to play here. I'll tell you that. That was a wild game. Jim, you're a diplomat. Thanks for stopping. You bet. Thank you. I appreciate it. Jim Harkham, who says his players feel like maybe they had one taken away from them. And we'll be back. Heading, and it was crazy. 35 all, a tie. Eastern Michigan and Colorado State nodding up at 35. For Steve Alvarez, my partner Tom Graham, I'm Drew Goodman saying so long from Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins.